Hello everyone. Welcome to Friday night. I see I have audio happening. I have my hair in a ponytail and I have distracted mom with a bottle of starch and an iron. So I already have an advantage in tonight's jelly roll race. <laughs> she, mom, you gotta put the microphone on so they can hear you. She's muttering over there. Becky, evil. <laughs> So, uh, last week when we had our live stream, several of you had asked about doing a jelly roll race. And honestly, several of you have asked about doing a jelly roll race even before last night because my mom has been doing lots of them. And mom wants to make a jelly roll race quilt for all of her four kids. And so she asked me to pick out a jelly roll for my jelly roll race quilt that she's going to make for me. I picked a lovely to a pink jelly roll and I thought, you know what, this will be fun. This will be something we can do tonight on a live stream. So we're going to do one tonight, but I want to give you full disclosure here. This is not really a race. Mom is not as fast as I am. However, mom has more hours in a day than I do to sew, work, kids stuff you know so she may be able to finish hers well we're going into a weekend so maybe i'll finish mine too but she may finish hers before mine but i don't think either one of us are really going to finish on tonight's live stream yeah. and the reason why i bring that up is because it's going to be important for those of you that have never done this before i know several of you out there wanted to do this alongside of me and this is your chance because we're going to take it slow and we're just going to do it step by step and we're going to break it down so if this is something you want to do Go grab a jelly roll and let's get started. Before I start sewing mine, I'm gonna give you all of the variations and some tips and tricks that you can use. And so throughout the video, if people come in late, I may ask you to come back to the very beginning of the video and get this so I don't have to keep repeating it. We'll see how that goes. I will tell you, I have not starched all of my jelly roll strips. Mom is. So that's a choice that you get to make. There's going to be a number of choices that you get to decide on when you're putting this together. As long as you are gentle feeding your fabric in and you're not pulling the fabric as it's going into the machine, you should be pretty okay. I wouldn't worry too much about it. That's the first thing. The second choice that you're going to need to decide is do you want your strips to touch one another? Or do you want to add a little bit of space in between those strips? And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So I have already put just two strips together so I could demonstrate this for you. These two strips have a piece of white fabric in between them. Now for this one, I did decide to sew it at that 45 degree diagonal, just like you would do if you were creating strips for binding. I like the way that diagonal looks. However, you don't have to have a diagonal. You can have no space in here, which means you're just gonna sew your strips directly together. You could add a square, which you would just cut a two and a half inch square and put them in between there. Or you can add another rectangle. Mom is gonna put a rectangle in between her strips of some black fairy frost fabric, also by Tula Pink. And so you're gonna see that bright pop of color and then a little rectangle and then a bright pop of color and a little black rectangle so that's what hers is going to look like so so far you have two choices to make to starch or not to starch either way is fine and space or no space the third choice that you're going to have to make is when you do join your strips together do you want to join them with a straight seam and just so my sound is odd 
Yes, my mic is working. Very low tonight. Hold on. Hit stop and restart. No, that's the right setting. Let's try this. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. That's weird. Testing. That's weird. Okay. Is it better? Oh, wow, it is better now, isn't it? These silly little lapel things. Now it's way too loud, isn't it? We're going to go over all this again in just a second. Testing, testing, yep. Testing, testing. Okay. Interesting. Okay, there it is. I have no clue. Like, listen, I bought that lapel. Whatever. We're not going to get into it, but we're good. All right. So let's start over. For those of you whose ears were bleeding, I apologize. Happy Friday night, everybody. Today is Friday, August 25th, and we are going to do a jelly roll race. Now that the audio is fixed, let's just dive right into what it is we're going to do. Mom and I have each selected a jelly roll that we're going to put together into a jelly roll Reese. Mom is working with a tulip pink jelly roll that is going to make a jelly roll quilt for myself. And I'm just using a batik jelly roll that I pulled off of my shelves. We are not using the same jelly roll. And I want to preface that even though this is a jelly roll race, we're going to take it a little slow. So if this is something that you've always wanted to do and you're ready to jump in, go grab a jelly roll. I'm going to give you a list of a few choices that you'll get to make and decide for yourself as you're putting this together. Sorry, as you're putting this together and we'll go over all that in just a minute. Um, getting distracted here. <laughs> no, it's not you. I've got text and things coming in. So, um, Man, I'm really distracted now and I've lost my train of thought. Just poof, right out the window. They have choices. No, I I already I know I already said that. I don't know what I was planning to say. I literally thoughts are gone from my brain. Okay, so I'll just I'll just pick up and maybe I I don't even know. You have some choices that you have to make for a jelly roll race. This is a very easy quilt to do. Neither one of us are going to finish this over the, e the course of this evening's live stream, but we may finish it over the course of the weekend. And I tell you that because you may end up leaving this live stream after a couple hours or so with a bit of homework and that's okay. The bulk of the work will be done tonight. And then by the time we get to the end of the live stream, it'll just be rinse, lather, repeat until you get all of your quilt top put together. Three choices that you need to make when you pull your jelly roll. Choice number one, starch or no starch. Mom is starching all of the strips in her jelly roll race. I am, excuse me, not. So I've got my jelly roll race laid out here in front of me. That's choice number one. Choice number two is the layout of your strips. I prefer to put these together just picking the strips up as they come off of the jelly roll because as you start to put these together, the fabric just kind of gets a little scrappy and goes where it needs to go or wants to go anyway. And so it doesn't really behoove me to spend too much time focusing on the placement of the fabric. I'm going to let the fabric fall where it may and just be very... Um, very open and receptive to the fact that the jelly roll is curated to work together. All of these fabrics are going to look great together. The designer said so because the designer picked them and put them in a jelly roll. We're not going to worry about where they're laying in the quilt. So that's decision number two. Decision number three is how you're going to join them together. And this kind of breaks out into a few different areas. Do you want to put some negative space in between your strips of fabric? Or do you just want the fabric to butt up against one another? And then when you're sewing the fabric, either to its strip or that negative spacing piece, 
Do you want it sewn on the diagonal or just straight edge? I'll tell you the straight edge is a little bit easier, I think, because you don't have to go back and trim things away, but I really like the effect of that diagonal edge. Mom and I are both going to add some negative space in between our strips, but if you're looking just to get it done quicker, I would just sew one strip to the next strip and don't worry about that negative space. For me, I'm doing it on the diagonal, and so what you can see here is this white strip. This is a two and a half inch by five inch piece of fabric that I have joined on the 45 degree line to the end of one strip and the beginning of the next one. And it's gonna create these little white diamonds spread out through my quilt, which I think is just gonna be really pretty. Mom was gonna do this, but I think sewing on that diagonal is just a little too much for her tonight. So she's gonna add that negative space into her quilt, but she's gonna do it a little differently. She's gonna take a two and a half inch by five inch rectangle, and she's just gonna sew the short edge of that rectangle to her short edge of her strip. And so what you're gonna see in that quilt is all of her strips of fabric are gonna be, of course, in the jelly roll, but sprinkled throughout will be these two and a half inch by five inch rectangles just adding like little black rectangles everywhere and i think that's going to be kind of cool too especially because that jelly roll is super super bright and the black is really going to pop against it um i did see that a few people have come in and said hi so hello to all of you katie thank you for the tip she said here i'll distract you some more put this in your fan club jar time to have some fun uh katie sent a 25 dollar tip mom Oh, I feel like Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea why those micro, that's what, my, that's where my brain was. So just to kind of go back and talk about that while you're prepping your jelly roll and getting things together. Yeah. I spent like $25 on a little lapel mic that's supposed to plug into this thing so that I don't have the big hunka hunka thing sitting on the collars of my shirt. Um, and obviously it does not sound great. They did have a higher quality one that's supposed to work really well with this, but it was like $75, $80, and I didn't want to spend that money. guess I should have spent that money because that $20 or $30 one is apparently just a dud. So, there you go. Uh, Lori says she puts two and a half inch squares in hers. Yep, you can do that as well. Two and a half inch squares work. Two and a half inch by whatever size that you want. We just want to make it a little bit different. I've done squares. I've done the diamonds. I've done just the edges together, either straight or at an angle. All of it looks good. The whole idea here is just to enjoy it and have fun. So once you have your jelly roll, what you're going to do is starch it if you want to, but you don't have to. And then once you're ready to start sewing, you're just gonna take your pieces and just start sewing one strip right after another all along until this whole pile is one great big two and a half inch by like 800 inches worth of fabric. That's what you're gonna do. And that's quite a bit of what I'm going to be working on now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start getting ready for that. So what I'm doing, I'll show you here. Because I am sewing these and doing the diagonal thing, I'm grabbing one of my strips and then I'm making an L, a backwards L, so that this fabric comes up and then starting in this corner and coming all the way down to this corner, I am sewing along that 45 degree line the exact same way that I would do it if I were securing fabric together so that it created by uh, binding. Now, before we get started too far, it's actually a good idea to do it at this point. When you're building out your jelly roll race, if you don't do this step, you're not gonna get the movement of the fabric flowing every which way. It's not gonna have as much movement as you really want it to. And so this first strip, this very first one, you need to cut some off of it. Now, normally I just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact, but the rule of thumb is you want to cut about 18 inches off. So I'm just going to lay this down on my cutting mat. I'm going to grab my rotary cutter and right around the 18 inch mark, I'm just going to lob that off. I'm not going to use this in my quilt. This is scrap. If you love collecting scraps, put it in your cherished scrap bin or 
dare I say, toss it away, whatever works for you. No rules in your sewing room. But if you don't take that cut, you won't get that movement. It's important to do that first before you do anything else because trust me, you will forget. Ask me how I know. <laughs> how do you know? Because I've done it. <laughs> now, why exactly did I get the wild hair up my in my head to starch things? You got to put the microphone. Do you have the microphone on? It's right there. Right where? Oh, it, it has to be on you. Oh. Because it's designed to pick you up when it's close to you. Okay. Otherwise, it'll sound like you're In a talking across the room. And, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. But um, if you're going to if you're gonna bother with the microphone, then just clip it on your collar. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say? What, what? Oh, why did you get a hair up your butt to starch? Yeah. Well, okay. So let's talk about that before I start sewing. When you're working with this fabric, it is not stretchy on the long edges. It is stretchy on the edges between the salvage. If you pick up a strip of fabric, and I'm going to do this with the piece that I just cut off because I don't want to distort the fabric that's going to be in my quilt. When I give a tug on it, sorry, this way, it doesn't move. It doesn't stretch. But when I give a tug on it this way, I get some stretch to it. So when I add starch to my strips, this mom. Yes. Do you see what I'm, you're, I see the back of your head. I'm, I'm turning. Okay. <laughs> I was demonstrating for her. She wasn't even looking. <laughs> this doesn't stretch, yeah. but this yeah. does. Okay. So when you add the sizing of the starch, it's not going to remove that stretchiness. It's still going to be there but it's gonna make it have a little bit more body and a little less likely to starch. Now, what we're doing is a very beginner friendly project and it is super forgiving. So if you don't starch, that's not gonna really matter as long as you're being gentle when you're putting your strips into the machine. I wouldn't pull on it and I wouldn't pull here. I, you know, just you know, let the feed dogs do the work. <laughs> So a lot of times I will tell mom to starch her fabric anyway, because since she's beginner quilter, a beginner quilter, it helps remove even just a little bit of the stretch out of it, which will give her a better product. If you are more seasoned, you probably get by without doing it. Hello, everybody joining in the chat. I'm turning my monitor this way so I can see y'all a little bit better. And we're going to do... One more thing here. Oops. There we go. That way I can see the chat without squinting. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. As I mentioned, I've cut 18 inches off of my first strip and then I took a two and a half inch by five inch rectangle and I sewed on the 45 degree angle my little white piece of fabric and I'm going to show you exactly what that looked like because I'm going to do it again. When I attach fabric together on the diagonal, I always make a backwards L. I know some people do it differently. That's fine. As long as you're getting the angle the right way, you can do it whatever way works for you. And then I start in the upper right hand corner and I sew a 45 degree line down to the lower left hand corner. And then I can test to make sure that I am continuing that fabric and I'm going to grab another strip. Hello, Rebecca Shanks. Oh no, Katrina. Hi, Sean. How are you? The guy who sews? Mm -hmm. Hi, Sean. Now I'm going to take the next jelly roll strip and I'm going to attach it to that white fabric. This time I'm going, I do need to move this piece back to the left so that I'm not sewing through that. I'm going to take this to the machine and the same thing that I did before, 45 degree line from the top right down to the lower left. Now I do have a, I do have, um, I'm just testing my strip to make sure everything looked okay. I do have a, 
Oh, I do have diagonal seam tape on my machine. So what that is, is it's like washi tape. It has two black lines and a red line in the middle. The two black lines on either side are a quarter of an inch away from that red line that's in the center. And that red line is lined up. When I place on my machine, I lined it up so that that red line is directly lined up with my needle. So as I'm sewing, I don't have to do any marking. That could help me work on this a little bit quicker. You'll notice I'm gonna grab my fabrics, line them up to make my backwards L. I'm gonna bring this over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna place the spot, the corner, the upper right corner exactly under the needle where I need to start. And then I'm gonna put the point where I wanna end up on that red line of my diagonal seam tape. And I'm just going to sew very carefully while trying to keep that point from the bottom left corner on top of that red line of my diagonal seam tape. And then I'll bring it back over here, fold it down with my hand. And as long as I am continuing the angle that I wanted or expected, then I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna do this until all of my strips are put together. Did you ever show Mom and Nancy's other Jelly Roll quilts she finished? Yes, Mary Lou, it was in my Tuesday video. And I think I showed them last night or last week too on the live stream. Or maybe it was the week before. I think these white diamonds are gonna make it look nice. And I'm gonna tell you what, these white diamonds it's a, it's a design element that I'm adding that I'm really excited about, but it is going to slow me down because once mom is ready to start sewing, it's going to be a whole lot faster for her to sew just a quarter inch away from the edge of the two and a half inch side of the fabric. But of course I have to finish, you know, starching. Yeah, that is the bad thing. Once you starched, you're kind of committed. No worries, Mary Lou. Should be in this past Tuesday's video. I think we showed one of the quilts and then maybe last week for the other one. I've done a jelly roll rug, but not a jelly roll race. Yeah, we'll call, I don't know if, I don't feel like we can call this a race because I'm not actually going to race. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to enjoy every step of the process, but this is what a jelly roll race is. Now you're probably curious why I'm getting a little finicky when I go to add this other piece on. It's because this corner, if it's under this way, when I start to sew, I'm worried that I could catch this in my seam, seam when I add the other strip to the other side of that white rectangle. So I'm trying to tuck the seam allowance on, I'm trying to press all my seams away from the white is basically what I'm doing. And I'm trying to start doing that as I go. I'll tell you a tip that I have that I tried to give mom and she didn't want to listen to when she did her first one you're gonna be a little disorganized when it comes to doing this. It's, it's gonna be a little messy and that's okay. Meaning as fabric is coming off of your sewing machine, it's okay for it to go into a pile. It does not need to be neatly folded and accordion folded and laid on the floor. Let it be a great big pile and you can clean it up after you get this part done you'll spend more time trying to organize yourself than you will actually sewing if you do it that way. Boy, I wish that was no, mom is right. not going to be in camera with us. She, I asked her if she wanted to be, she said, no, you're lucky she's mic'd up. <laughs> she's in pajamas and has no interest in being on camera. No. I do have cameras that I could put in front of her. She no. just doesn't want them. That would be a hard no but she is excited to be here sewing with you and we will show off her work product as she's going. I'll bring it over and show it off. So 
some finger pressing as I go. And I'm just trying to focus to make sure that I'm putting right sides of my fabric together. And I'm sewing my little diamonds. Don't forget tomorrow, Mary is doing, I think it's gonna be the last of her de-stashes. Uh, we've already got the Whatnot sale set up over on Whatnot. And we've got 183 items, I think it is, to go through. A lot of it is yardage, but there's some notions and some grab bags and some pre-cuts too that are gonna be a lot of fun. Everything is extremely low starting price. For example, all of her yardage that she has, whether it's a half a yard or three yards, the starting auction price on everything is $4 for her yardage. So it's all priced to move. And then we've got a fun thing where we've put together some grab bags in clear Ziploc bags. So you can see some or most of what's inside of there. And we're starting the bidding on those at $25. And we'll let those run out. And everything tomorrow, if you're in the US, is free shipping. Vera is asking, what is the jelly rolls you are using? This is a Sakura jelly roll. It's a batik. That's all it said was Sakura on it. I don't have anything else other than that. Mom is doing a jelly roll with Tula Pink's True Colors. Kathleen said, just enjoy the evening, Mama. That's what matters. Aww. Have you rotated the diamond before? Uh oh, like, hold on. I, I'm doing this the same way every time, right? Upper left. The diamond is going from the upper right down to the lower left. Yeah, that works. Now, what might end up happening now that that comment was put out there and I'm overthinking the whole process, uh, we might end up seeing that sometimes the diamonds go this way and sometimes maybe they go this way as we sew the rows together. I'm not going to stress about it. <laughs> Katie says, I called dibs on your jelly roll. <laughs> There we go. Oh, that's why you aren't cutting off the selvages. Yeah, that's why, because it's going to be in the diagonal. So we're not going to worry about that just yet. I do have to go back through and trim away the seam allowance on all of these, but we'll do that in the next step. We're going to batch sew as much as we possibly can. So I'm curious how many of you just put a little heart emoji or a little happy face or raise your use the emojis to raise your hand. How many of you are going to do a jelly roll race with us tonight? or at least get one started. Curious how many are doing this project with us. I don't know if it's gonna be as many as we thought. Eh. A lot of times people just like to watch the process and then decide if they wanna do it later and that's fine too. Candy is telling you hello. Hello Candy. Oh, we got a couple. Roxanne is doing it. Juanita is doing it. Bambi is doing one. Kay Watson is doing one. My Quilt Projects wants to. Sherry is doing one. Judy is doing one. Nice. Well, that's more than I suspected. <laughs> Bill says, if I send Nancy a jelly roll, will she make me a jelly roll race as a surrogate child in Georgia? Yes. Uh-oh, Bill. Send it in the mail. She'll put it together for you. Are you going to quilt it, too? No. Oh, are you just going to piece it? Yeah, you can quilt it. <laughs> you can quilt it. 
No, you. Oh, I can quilt it. You might never get it back. <laughs> oh, Mom, you may have opened yourself up to a can of worms. You've adopted this whole audience. They all might want jelly roll races from you now. You're going to be working. Time, I get overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa says, I'm stuck in the hospital, but I want to watch at least. Oh, Teresa, I hope you get better soon. So if you have two of the same strips, do you put them at the end? So yes, I don't even worry about it. You'll notice this one and then the one after it, they're the same fabric. I'm just sewing them all together. I am not worrying about the placement. I'm just sewing them together exactly as how they were in the jelly roll. Which is what I will be doing. Yep, and that's exactly what mom has done each and every time. Just trust your designer. Don't overthink it. Just enjoy putting thread through fabric. Or in fabric, rather, I should say. It's a process. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Sean says, wait, I thought I was Mama Nancy's favorite. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Now you guys know my conundrum, right? Everybody's the favorite. That's right. <laughs> Karen says she is baking brownies instead, and I would like to know where my brownies are. I Yum. Have some. I would like some brownies. I like ice cream. I know. I've been thinking about that. I've been like, mm, ice cream would be good. Obviously, that's not happening tonight, but maybe tomorrow night after the whatnot sale, we can go out By for an ice cream cone. Things over, everything will be closed. Maybe. Or maybe we'll go after the quilt show before the whatnot sale. Okay. Yol Yolanda says hello. Hello. I think I just ran out of bobbin. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're doing this, have some bobbins wound in nearby. Well, I have bobbin in here, a lot of bobbin. I always, putting the bobbin back in when the machine is down inside of the table you're doing it completely by feel <laughs> and it can be a bit overwhelming especially when you're doing it in front of a live studio audience Brenda said it's so wonderful that you and your mom can sew together what size what is the size of your white material it is two and a half inches by five inches you can make it any size you want, but you should keep it two and a half inches. One of the dimensions needs to be two and a half inches so that it'll sew nicely with your Jelly Roll Ray strips. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. You two and a half inch by two and a half inch if you wanted to. Hello, Donna. Hello, Mary Lou. She says, I love your fabric. Sandy says, I love Fridays. I was trying to decide what to do for September 17th. I love your colors. It's so nice. Fridays are so special for me because it's the last day of the work week and it's the start of the weekend. So Friday night sometimes, sometimes sets the tone for how productive I can be in my sewing room that week. Spoiler alert, last weekend I was very productive. <laughs> Susie Rose says, greetings to one and all from 101 degrees Las Vegas at 5.30 p.m. Ooh. LCSD says, I am a slow sewer. It took me two days to do a jelly roll race top. I understand that. There's nothing wrong with that. Mom takes a while. And you know what? Honestly, mine won't probably be finished till later this weekend. And that's okay. Remember, at the end of the day, the quilt top, it's not about how fast you sew. It's about how much you enjoyed the process. Hello, Martha. Teresa is here? Hello, Teresa. Teacups and Roses says, that looks so beautiful. I am working on a UFO. 
I've been working on UFOs too. I want to get as many of the UFOs that I had at the beginning of 2003 done be as, as I can done before the end of the year. I'm trying to figure out how to say that correctly because it sounds weird every time it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I want to finish as many of the UFOs that I had at the start of 2023 as I can before the end of the year. That's it. That means you have just over four months. I know, but look at how much progress I've made, Mom. Mom <laughs> has seen all the quilt tops that I've been knocking no, out. They stress me. No, but you've seen what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was saying. Oh. She gets overwhelmed with too many things happening at once. So for her, we're trying to minimize the chaos by keeping all of her projects to just two or three projects that are actively being worked. Hello, Ellen. That's right, Gwenny. The race is relative. Enjoy the sew. I've made many of these races. Sometimes I do half an hour today, half an hour the following week. Slow and steady. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Just enjoy the process. Hello and good evening from Wisconsin, says Jane. How's Hello. Cheese. <laughs> Kara Muse is here from a chilly Wyoming. I love it that your audience is so diverse. Mm -hmm. And they're from everywhere. Craft on and so forth says, that's a beautiful jelly roll. It is, right, Pam? Like, it's gorgeous. But did you expect me to make one with something other than batiks? I mean, no, do you instead, even know you me, me at doing, all? You got me doing the stupid tulip pink that I can't uh, stand excuse, looking at. Excuse me. I offered to do that one and give you this jelly roll. And you said, which one are you going to keep? And I said, the tulip pink. And you said, then I'm going to do that one. Because so, you asked me to make you one. Uh, well, you said you were going to do one for everybody. All four of you. Yep. So let's just be clear here about what actually happened. And also, while we're at it, mom is learning another important lesson. And that important lesson is if you don't like the way fabric looks, it's really stinking hard to finish the project. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days, I'll finish pressing these. <laughs> you could take a break and start sewing the raw edges together of the ones that you have ironed. I don't want to get into it and then have to stop to start starching again. I'm so close to being done. Okay. But fabric can look different in the finished project sometimes. That's what the group is reminding you of right now. Okay. Thank you. Ah! Stop sewing again. And I know I have enough bobbin. Oh, look, a piece of scrap. Hello, Nikolai. I was thinking about you and Katie the other day when I pulled the polar bear out to start thinking about how I'm going to quilt it.
There we go. No, nothing. I think the thread cutter is cutting the thread too short for the bobbin to be able to pick it back up. Great. I just twisted my arm the wrong way. I feel like I'm going to be sewing with that bobbin case open all night. There we go. There we go. All right, try it again. Make sure I've got the right side up. There we go. This is like butter. Mary Lou says, Becca, I lost my sojo. My back is hurting and I can't get it. I usually force my, I guess there's another line coming after that. So we'll wait and see what else you said. <laughs> uh, hello, Randy. You're working on the green string quilt. That's awesome. Lori says she is sewing borders on her first queen size quilt. Ooh, that's a big job. Looks like Traverse City. Uh, somebody's talking about tornadoes somewhere, but I don't. I don't. I'm on a. I'm having a hard time following that. I don't know if it was in Michigan or not. It sounds like it was. Ah, Mary Lou's, uh, to finish what she was saying, it's you, she can't, her back is hurting and can't get it, can't get to it. I usually force myself to work anyway, but it's not working. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. Mom's back has been bothering her too. And we just got her a TENS unit to help with that. And she said it's really helped. It has. Becca in Detroit, it was bad on Wednesday night. Oh my gosh. That's kind of what I saw on Facebook. LCSD said five tornadoes, two near Canton, two near me in Canton and Belleville. Don't know how much damage was done, but lots and lots of flooding. Oh Oof. dear. I hope everybody's okay. Yeah, when I lose my sojo, one of the things that I do is give myself a break, right? Sometimes you don't want to create and there's like forcing yourself back into it before you're really ready. Sometimes hard. So just breathe and it'll be okay. It'll always be there for you when you're ready. But if you have the itch to do something or you feel like you need to have some sort of progress, Start with a small project, something that you know you can whip up quickly. That way your sense of accomplishment is stirred pretty quickly. And that'll help you get your sojo back. Yeah. Doing it slowly rather than all the time big projects. Yeah. Set yourself a timer for a few minutes every day and try and just do that. When the timer's done, get up and walk away. Sometimes I find organizing my space and tidying it up gives me a little a little room to breathe too and it helps me get motivated because I can sometimes feel overwhelmed by all the things that are around me. I always feel like I can breathe a little bit easier if I tidy my space up.
Oh, Katie says she has not sat in front of her machine for over a week now. Ooh, that's rough. Pam says she started with scrunchies because they were quick and easy to finish. Yes, 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 yes. Lori says, I understand back issues. I was finally feeling a little better than tested gravity a few weeks ago. Gravity won. Oh, no. And hurt my back. It's taking a long time to get better. Lori took a nasty fall. Ouch. I'm sorry. Hope you feel better. The rain shuts down Mount Charleston outside of Vegas. Mud, the rains shut down Mount Charleston outside of Vegas. Mud and rock slide. Yeek. Sue said, I'm really impressed with my TENS unit. I'm a dog groomer and on my feet 10 plus hours a day. It helps with neck, back, and shoulders. I love mine. It wasn't very expensive either. It's pretty affordable. 30 some dollars, I think. That isn't bad. No. Not for the amount of relief that it gave you. Oh, that was tremendous all by itself. Mm hmm. Gwendolyn says, please be careful with TENS devices. It can dull the nerves. Using lidocaine patches intermittently with the TENS can be helpful. Huh. I put a pain patch on the other night I didn't even I couldn't even feel it hmm. like she couldn't it didn't do anything to relieve the pain is what she's saying but I you couldn't you, feel the patch either no that was before the tens unit yeah before you we even got it right that was the night you ordered it yeah okay so it wasn't like your tens unit had dulled your nerves and you oh, couldn't no, feel it uh -uh. I am making a pile of strips, Mom. I'm still over here starching. Well, would you like me to take some to starch for you? No, I'm almost done. You said that like 20 minutes ago. It'll probably be another 20 minutes. Uh, I was watching an episode of 30 Rock last night. I really, I did not watch that show when it was on, but I am kind of binge watching it now and I'm really liking it. But I, this particular episode, they're on a plane and the plane is like stuck at the gate and delayed and the pilot just keeps coming on and saying uh it'll be about a half an hour and so they challenge him they're like why do you keep saying that and he's like because half an hour is a perfect amount of time to let people know that something's wrong and we're delayed but not enough that they'll get upset but <laughs> he said half an hour like over and over and over again <laughs> I feel like that's the state of your ironing, Mom. Oh, about a half an hour. Oh, about a half an hour. My white strips are cut at two and a half inches by five inches. I think I have six left to do. Awesome. You're getting there. <laughs> they do. The strips are matching my ironing pad. That's true. As only Becca could do. Mama Harden says, I had surgery yesterday on my back. They put permanent unit around my spine. It is, it is implanted under the flesh. Mm. I'm guessing like a permanent TENS unit. Probably. Kind of puts me in mind of how they would do a pacemaker. Yeah, maybe. BR says, I am six weeks out from back surgery. Just now getting myself back to back into motion with physical therapy. So sewing is not 
on my priority at the moment, but I want to. I have the urge. Maybe there's another crafting thing that you can do instead of sewing and that'll keep you feeling creative while you're waiting to get back into the sewing room. Oh, I like this one. Bottom, 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 bottom. <clears throat> Judy Neighbor says, I have an implanted TENS unit, which is a nerve stimulator for my back and the leg pain for the last 16 years wow. after my fusion, and it stays on all of the time. If I turn it off, the pain starts immediately. Wow. Wow. I can't even imagine it being that bad. I don't want to. Me either. Beautiful, beautiful batiks, Becca, Martha said. I know, Martha. They're great, right? Hey, hey, hey. It's so pretty. Susan's Halloween table runner is layered, basted, and has all of the th colors of thread for quilting. She's ready to go. There we go. Mom, you sound out of it. You are not your usual exciting, jovial, chipper, fun self. Is the bed. starch getting to you? No, I'm ready for bed. Yeah. Mom has done a lot of stuff this week. She's made a lot of progress. And today was the day that she was going to take off. And I think she forgot it was Friday. <laughs> no, I just kept pushing it off. Oh, well, I, I got home from work and it was probably about 4.30, 5 o'clock when I walked in. Mom came upstairs about 10 minutes after I walked in the door. And she was like, I had to take a break today. But she's been like a little rock star this week knocking things out. She's making some good progress on her layer cake pop quilt. And I don't know where she is with her charm quilt. I need more strips. Oh, out. I need to do that for you, don't I? Yeah. Okay. That's why I set it down. I'll cut that for you later tonight so you have it in the morning. Is Mary coming to, with you, to go with you to the quilt shop? I think so. She said she'd be here about 9. I want to leave about 9.30, so. Yeah, I plan to still be sleeping. Not a problem. I won't wake you up. Not about quilting, Carolyn says. However, I just wanted to know if you or your mom have anything on your crochet hook. No. Mm -mm. I don't really crochet very much. So I, I do tinker with it now and again. But it's not my go-to. I'm not very good at it. And I, I, I understand how stupid that sounds because nobody's born good at anything. But I also don't have the desire to get any better. <laughs> That's kind of where I am with it. I'm done. Yeah, but you are really good. And you have phases where you, you crochet and then you don't. Yeah, and when I don't, it's usually for years at a time. Okay. I would much rather work with fabric or embroidery floss than to work with yarn. But my sister, if she does not have a crochet hook in her hand, my sister Nicole, if she does not have a crochet hook in her hand, it's because she has a fork in her hand and it's time to eat. Or a child. Or a child. Know. Although I have seen her have child and crochet hook at the same time. This is true. So like, I, that's not meant to be like, she eats too much. That's not what I meant. I just realized it came out that way. It's just like, crocheting is life like that's what she does to keep saying we went to see joey mcintyre in concert and it was about a 45 minute drive to the venue 
and she wanted to take a bag of yarn and crochet hooks to the concert so she could have something to work on during the concert. I was like, Nicole, you come on. <laughs> you can take it, work on it in the car. I'm not going to tell you that, but you're not going to take it into the theater. You're, you're not going to know that they'd let her. Well, some places have a bag policy. They won't let you take that stuff in. Well, it would, well, crochet, Shea hook isn't sharp, but she has scissors in that bag. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I usually just go with wallet, phone, keys, and yeah, that's I it. Yeah, I've given up on purses only when I go away. Do I take a purse? I take like a little wristlet most of the time. Or I go, I go two speeds. Either a little wristlet that has just like keys, phone, wallet, or a full-on messenger bag that has everything in it. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Beatrice, uh, Donna says, this is Be uh, Beatrice here. Okay, Hel hello, Donna, who is really Beatrice. Rita Skinner said, I find crochet a bit boring. I have to look at it all the time, but I can knit by feel a lot of time. No, I have to look at it. I have to look at crochet when I'm doing it. So uh, it... It becomes one of those things where, and then I have to count and focus. I don't know. It's, it's a whole thing. I'm not very good at it. And it's honestly because I don't practice. I'm not in the mood. Donna Hoskins says, sorry, fat fingers at scent. I crochet rag rugs with one and a half inch strips. I would love to have one. You could make one. I don't want to. <gasps> Sharon Lewis is a neighbor. She says, hello, Becca and Quilters from Washington, D.C. Well, hello from Northern Virginia. <laughs> I had a startling realization, Mom, wow. the other day when Jason and I were looking up locations for a local restaurant. And because we lived in Arlington for so long, anytime we went to go look for locations or something, we would go look at like Washington DC and Arlington would usually be included in, it's when we went to the movie theater. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so we pulled up the Alamo Draft House website and we went to locations and I went to Washington DC because that's what I'm programmed to do. And it did not have the Prince William County one listed there. Oh. And so I was like, what? What? It doesn't have one, Jane. He's like, no, it's right here. I've seen it. And so I was like, oh, wait a minute. We have to look under Virginia now, don't we? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I've been trying to, like, when people are like, where are you from? I've been trying to say Northern Virginia rather than Washington, D.C. since we moved outside of the Beltway. Oh, we no longer are Washington, D.C. people, I guess. We're Northern Virginia people now. Donna says that she has some of those uh, things that she was... I don't remember what I said, but one of those things that you said you wanted. Mm -hmm. She said she has some if you would want one. I would love one. Okay, well, you can mail one to her at my happy mail address in the description box below, and I'll make sure she gets it. And she says... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, Mom? What do you say? I do. Thank you very much. Y'all are too Oh, I love this me. one. This is beautiful. <sighs> okay, I lied. There was more than six. Oh, my goodness. Brenda says, we've been canning for several years, but after COVID and shortages, we made a big garden. If my husband was able to help me in one, I would have one. I would love to do a garden. However, I want the garden to be built up on a table height so I don't have to get down in the ground, number one. Number two, I would like it to be in a greenhouse to keep the critters and the wildlife out. And number three, I did a garden and I think I did it wrong because I grew tomato plants and I got like three tomatoes. Okay. Okay, guess what? I'll be here. Leave your microphone behind so they don't hear you using the potty. It's on the table. Okay. Whee! 
I'm getting the urge to make the Jelly Roll Race quilt. I sure have enough Jelly Rolls, probably 75 of them. Oh my goodness, Mary Lou. You should do one. I did this with Tiffany a year or so back and she did it with two Jelly Rolls to make it even bigger and it turned out pretty cool. So that's an option for you too. Good night, Pam. This is honestly the longest part because I'm going so slow, adding the little diamond wedges in between each one. After this, it's gonna start going a whole lot faster. But I'm more than halfway done. <laughs> Christine says, it sounds like you're describing your produce department at your favorite market. <laughs> Mary Lou, one jelly roll will make a quilt that's about 48 inches by about 64. Uh, somebody's asking how big my white strips are. They are two and a half inches by five inches. You can make them whatever size you want, but make sure that at least one side measures two and a half inches so that it works with your jelly rolls. Thank you, Brenda. Oh, it's getting warm. I need to turn on some air. One second. Ooh, my daughter's upstairs playing the Sleeping Beauty theme on her saxophone. I wish you could hear it. It sounds so good. And I want to start singing with it too. <laughs> uh, hello, Sheila. Ugh, my needle came unthreaded again. Ugh. Come on. Why is it not working? Something's up with my needle threader and I don't have time to play around with it. So we're going to fix it. The little metal doohickey that's supposed to wrap around the back of the needle to actually thread the needle. It's not wrapping around. So we're just going to thread it the natural way. <sighs> manual way. That's what I meant. I know you. I've walked with you. Why did, what the heck? This is gonna bother me. It's bothering me. Why are you coming in threaded? Stop it. Oh, now it comes all the way around. I must have had something weird going on. I know you, I've walked with you once upon a dream. Question, I have never used batiks before. I have had a couple people tell me they are no, they are more difficult. What is your opinion? They may want to do a race, the earthy batiks with the earthy batiks I've been seeing. I do not think that they are more difficult. I do think that, and I don't know if this is true. So I'll just preface it with that. I have been told 
that when you're working with batiks, you should always use a sharp needle. So like a Microtech sharp. Hey, Shirley. Yes, Zoe still has her bearded dragon. Actually sits in the aquarium in our family room. Donna wants to know for the little mug rug thing, what is your um, what is your shape shape preference, round, oval, or rectangle? Square, round. She said round. I had to turn the fan on. You can turn it down, or point it towards the long arm. I just needed it to move some air. It doesn't have to blow on you or near you at all. Charlotte says, Becca, what machine are you sewing on? I am sewing on a Juki TL2010Q. Same machine that Tiffany has. That one was sewn completely crooked. I need to fix that. Was it though? I feel like it was. We're just going to re-sew it just to be safe. And here it is two hours later and I'm still prepping. It's only been an hour. I started at something after seven. It was like 7.30 when we came in here. Oh, okay. So it's not been completely two hours, but I understand how you feel. Feels like it's been about a week. It can feel that way. <clears throat> I'm so close to being done, I'm not going to stop now. Another half an hour. Maybe. There we go. Not mug. Actually, it's a floor rug. Oh. oh. Oval. Oval. She's changed her mind. I couldn't remember what you said rug-wise. Wow. That's going to be beautiful, Mom. I love it. And you can finally get rid of the oval jelly roll rug that I made for the basement that has that looks like the Matterhorn at the carnival. It's yeah, so it's dang bumpy. Outer, outer space. Yeah, it's really bad. I keep thinking I'm going to unstitch it. If you unstitch it, I will redo it. No. She said no. <laughs> no. No. Negative. I might take that home to work on. <clears throat> Ooh, Biff, uh, we've got some folks in the chat. Quiltessa saying that her bearded dragon loves blueberries and sweet potatoes. She's got a couple of them. Ours loves bananas and strawberries and kale. I keep... <sighs> Did you it, no, it's just doing these things where it's not sewing. The machine just decides to stop sewing and then it starts again like that. Air sewing for no reason, cut my thread, start sewing again, and now it sews. And I'll tell you what you told me yesterday. Your no, but you don't understand. Like, I just re threaded. Oh. Like, it's, it's, I, it might, maybe, well, it's time to change the needle. But we're not doing that right now. <laughs> what is the name of your jelly roll? I do not know. It just said Sakura. S-A-K-U-R-A. -A. Sakura Batiks. That's all it said. It's pretty, right? So far, I have Hello, been. Teresa. What's up, Mom? So far, I have nothing to show. <laughs> That's not true. You have two and a half inch strips. Next time you give me a choice to start or not start, I will not start. Well, there are some times where it's not a choice. This time was a personal preference. Three, 
formal. Love the hummingbird. Yeah, it's pretty. Did you hear me? What? This one in four more. Sweet. Now I know it's true that visions are seldom as they seem. I'm still singing the song from Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia, Mamma no, Mia. that one. Oh. I just lost it. I can't remember which one it was. Wanda Mar says, sometimes I have to rethread three or four times before it'll work better. Hello, Patsy. Sakura, Japanese cherry blossoms. Not that it helps. ID the fabric. No, it said Sakura. That's so... That might be why it's called that, because there are Japanese cherry blossoms and other sorts of print on this. I might have the paper. Maybe there was something else that I can grab and see. Picked it up at a quilt shop. Let me get all of these strips sewn together first. <laughs> Patsy said, who's ahead? Well, it depends. Mom is setting herself up to not have to be so delicate. And I just started sewing. So most of mom's strips are almost starched. And most of my strips are sewn together. However, once she starts sewing her strips together, she's going to go a little bit faster than I will. So... It's not really a race, though. No. Ooh. Sakura. Sure, whatever. Oh, it's the company. It's the name of the company, Genesa, Joanna says. Okay. I don't know that there's a name of the line. Or if there is, I just completely missed it. Little white piece is two and a half inches by five inches. What size will it be finished? Don't know, because I'm going to add some borders to it. But without borders, it'll be around 50-ish by 64-ish from one jelly roll. Hello, Shirley. She says, nice. Thanks for the answer. Nice catching you live. Nay, nice. thank you. I don't... You're welcome. Thank you. I don't know how to respond to that. My brain just had a brain fart. Welcome to the live stream. We'll say that. Welcome to the live stream. I've got two more strips to put to on here, and then I'll go digging for the paper. I'm going to go trash diving just for you guys. 
I should have kept the label out. I knew better. Did I keep it? No. I just tossed it like... Tossed it out like yesterday's trash. I was going to say like a red-headed stepchild, and then I realized I was probably going to offend somebody with that, so I probably shouldn't say it. And then I just told you that I was thinking it anyway. You're welcome. Now these little two and a half inch by five inch pieces of fabric, I'm only putting them in between my strips. I'm not gonna put it at the start or the end. This is my last strip. Can you sew the strips on the 45 without the white piece separating them? Yes. Absolutely you can. And you can sew them with a piece without the 45, so just straight sew. Or you could just sew the strips together straight without anything in between. There are no rules. You choose how you join your fabrics together. All right, there's my pile of strips. We're going to go look in ye old trash for some paper. Spoiler alert, there's going to be a bunch. <clears throat> Trash diving! Wah, wah, wah! Should be right on top, too. Because I just emptied my little bucket. Aha! There you is. It has nothing on it. But this does. Okay. <laughs> I worry about you. I worry about me, too. This is the label. <laughs> But on the bottom of it is this. The line is Hummingbird Lane, and it is by Robert Kaufman Fabrics. I was wrong completely. Here you go. Hummingbird Lane by Robert Kaufman Batiks. Not ah, Judy said, I pulled the layer cake out. It's ex it's excellent. The same as your jelly roll. It's called Hummingbird Lane by Robert Kaufman. She typed that as I was reading. So that's hilarious. <sighs> we knew that would happen. Bambi said, there's a lot of fabric on the floor. Glad I clipped my first strip to my table. That's a tip. Um, all right. So now what I've done is I've got this big long piece and on the back side I have all these little dog ears that I need to trim it doesn't matter how accurate the cutting is it just matters that I'm cutting away the bulk so I'm just going to come in with my scissors and trim away and I'm going to make sure that the fabric is pressing underneath the strips of fabric, not my white square or rectangle. I'm just going to do this for all of mine. You would probably get a much nicer cut if you pulled out the rotary cutter, but that just feels like a whole thing that maybe I don't need right now. Be curious to know what you guys would do in the chat. Would you go for the rotary cutter or would you just grab a pair of scissors? Depend on the cut. <clears throat> Still adding strips. No worries. It's not a race. Well, they say it's a race, but it's not really a race. Let's just call it jelly roll quilt. Yeah. We're making a jelly roll quilt. Take the rice out of it. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people say they can get this quilt done in an hour. I'm I don't know how. Them. I am not that person. I am not that person either. This is probably a three or four hour job for me. It's going to take me a couple days. And that's okay. 
whatever, however much time it takes you, is however much time it takes you. I'm ironing the last one. Scissors, rotary, scissors, 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 scissors. <laughs> Lots of people are going the scissor out. You hear me? Yep, you're ironing the last one. I feel like I bought this jelly roll while we were in Alabama. Okay. Because it's newer. I haven't had it on my shelf very long. Think you might have got it in uh, Tennessee? Maybe. Maybe I got it from... Um, Heavenly Stitches. Heavenly Stitches. Yeah, every every time I think of Heavenly Stitches, I want to call it Stitch in Heaven, which is a quilt shop in Texas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> While they may appreciate the uh, advertisement, it's not what you meant. <laughs> Gwenny says, I like to take an extra line of stitching so that the clippings can be bonus half square triangle units for future project. That's an awesome idea. I didn't even think about doing it with these, but I frequently do that anytime I do a stitch and flip. I could have had all these beautiful little tiny half square triangle units. I still could, but um, with how haphazardly I'm chopping this fabric, eh, we're gonna let it go. And instead, of trying to preserve every inch of this fabric, I will just enjoy it in a very beautiful quilt that will probably end up gifted to somebody special somewhere. Because we all know we keep very few of the quilts we make for ourselves. We always say, I don't know about you, but anytime I have a quilt, even one that I love, when I give it away, I always think, I can make another one that looks like that. I can do it again. But you never do. No, I don't. True story, the quilt I've been sleeping with every night, because as you all may remember from one of my vlogs back in June, the uh, Springbrook Blossoms quilt that was made out of the ombre dot confetti, no, the fairy dust confetti, I think, whatever. It was a beautiful V&Co fabric that I did it with. I had been sleeping with that quilt every night. It was my go-to, it traveled with me everywhere, and I gifted it to my aunt very it was a very loved quilt it was in good shape it wasn't falling apart but it was a very loved quilt i passed it on to my aunt and now i am sleeping with a quilt that donna made for me every night donna from handmade by ying that is my go-to for a little while but i do think we'll be moving on to another quilt soon because i have plans for that one Think it's going to go on a guest bed because it's pretty good size it's almost 80 by 80 i think that's right martha quilting is a labor of love either for ourselves or someone else that we love Mom, if you don't want to add those little black squares, you don't have to. Because that's just going to take you even longer. Because you, you'd you have to starch all the black squares if you starched your strips. So just, then just sew the strips together. Don't add the negative space. I'll bring that negative space in as an inner border. I'll cut some strips for you that way. Just let the colors bleed into one another, okay? All right, cut off 18 inches, she says. Yep, just eyeball it at about an arm's length from your first strip. And yes, I'm using scissors. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Tiffany said, I have one for you too, Becca. It just needs finished. 
but it's a cover it's a cover a whole bed not just a back oh i know tiffany's got that big massive one i gotta get you the backing for that quilt oof keep forgetting about it and then i remember and i go on about my day and i forget about it for another three weeks that's bad you know me and my brain Jason will love that one too, by the way. I can't believe you starched all those strips, Mom. Everyone. It's going to make it so much better for you. Truthfully, I didn't want to spend the time doing it, but I think I probably would have got better results if I did. was it that said they take their uh, thing for the table, the end? Oh, yeah. Um, I can give you a binder clip. Your first one, as you're attaching them. What's yeah. that first one? <clears throat> so this is your first one, just so you can find it easier. We'll just go like that. Uh, just clip it right there to the end. <gasps> oh, no. You guys, I'm not done. I have two more strips that were probably supposed to go on somewhere in the middle with all the aquas. So we're just going to add these to the end, not where the red is, where the dark blue is. So did anybody else see that? Like when I stood up and did something that the fabric went flying and you guys didn't tell me. <sighs> I'm going backwards. I have two more strips to add. It'll be fine. Look, Mom, we're sewing strips together at the same time. You want to race? No. I need Marcus set go. Here we go. <laughs> I do not wish to race. <laughs> Good night, Candy. Good night, Candy. Don't forget, you guys, we're going to pick our winner for my 20,000 subscriber giveaway live next week on Friday night. And Mom and I will both have our Jelly Roll Race tops uh, pieced. And so we'll show them off on the live streams next week. I do it on the short save, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Are you sewing them straight edges together? You're making one big long strip, remember? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. You looked a little confused for a minute. Nothing to do with you. Okay. Keep the clip. It confuses me. Okay. Instead of cutting the first strip down, I sew into a loop and move down about 18 inches to start the first big seam. I just can't stand wasting even that small of a piece. That's a night, that's a way to go. But I have already cut my loop, or I've already cut my 18 inch piece. And it served as scrap fabric that I desperately needed when I was testing the machine. So win, win, win. But that's a great idea. See, and I can do that at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Or somewhere in between. Did you cut your 18 inch piece off yet? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and you can add that to the last piece. Or like you said, somewhere in between if you wanted to. Okay. 
So here's all of my strips. I need to add the two that decided to try to run away from my quilt run, run, to the run, end. Run, run. But I gotta find the end. I know this was like it. There we go. So I've got two more strips to add on to the end here. Make sure I've got the right side up. I do. Bing, bing, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Nancy. Nancy. Does anybody else remember Mr. Dress Up? Yep. I used to love Mr. Dress Up. You also loved Mr. Rogers. I did. But I specifically loved Mr. Dress Up because of the arts and crafts time that he would do and the sounds of um the sounds of like his arts and craft time like him pulling the pens out of the drawer and stuff yeah. so soothing to me i was like oh yeah do some arts and craft time go in that costume trunk that's great hello mary lou she's asking why did you cut the piece off the beginning because otherwise you won't get as much movement of fabric in there it be because it would just quilt. be yeah you know, it would just be kind of more like a strip quilt the fabric wouldn't float and shift from one row to the other just adds more movement makes the fabrics from your strips be more staggered tickle trunk <laughs> Okay, last strip. Hopefully, make sure there's no more on the floor before I say that. Look under your desk. Right? Okay. You're welcome. Mr. Dress Up, Ernie Coombs, I believe was his real name. He lived about two... 20 minutes from me. I drove by his house all the time. Really? Yeah, that's what she said. Lori Clark. Oh, I thought you were saying that. Good night, Joanna. Uh, Mr. McSpeedy, the postal worker from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, I met in person at the White House. You did? Mm-hmm. I took a picture with him, too. Mr. McSpeedy or something like that. I remember his name. But he was the postman from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He was at the White House at Easter Egg Room one year. I got my picture taken with him. And then I went and met my very, my very best friend forever. Reese Witherspoon. We had a five-second conversation and became best friends. And never talked again. True story. Did she know it? <laughs> yeah, she's my best friend. She don't even know it. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do is bring my iron in and I'm just going to press all of my strips so that the seams are going underneath the color blocks. It's all finger pressed, but I want to make it like, I just want these to be really nice and flat before I move on to the next step. So mom is sewing and now I'm ironing. See how that worked out? Vicki asks, how big of a quilt will you be making? Without borders, this will measure 48 inches by about 60 inches-ish, give or take about five or so. I will be adding borders. Do not know the size of them yet. I think a five-inch border and a three-inch. I'll probably do a two-inch finished, inner, so two-and-a-half-inch strip for the inner border because maybe even smaller. I want it to be a very thin strip of white. Um, and then I'll do a nice big outer border. Uh, 
and they may do binding in white. Oh, oh my gosh. Still waiting for the iron to heat up. The first actor my family and I met back in the 60s was the man who played the mayor of Munchkins on Wizard of Oz from Linda Parsons. That's cool. Oh, no. Hersha Parday, who played Alice Garvey on Little House on the Prairie, passed away yesterday. Aww. There we go. I used to love Little House on the Prairie. Jason still does. I know. We've discussed it. It's a staple in this home. You, everybody will be happy to know I'm officially over Blue Bloods. Over? I'm done for now. For now. You'll come back. Well, when I go home, that's all Rick's going to watch, so of course I will. He has good taste. Well, he watches Farmhouse Fixer. Yeah. When it's on. Yeah. Well, there's not nearly as many episodes of Farmhouse Fixer as there is of Blue Bloods, so. He also likes watching FBI. He was watching that for a while when he I went downstairs. Oh, yeah. Every Monday and Tuesday. Oh, is that still a show that's running? Yes. All th there's three of them, and they all run on Tuesday night on... There's yeah. three different FBI shows called FBI? The FBI, FBI Most Wanted... And then I think it's international. Well, is the FBI Most Wanted like the America's Most Wanted from back in the day, or is this no, different? No, it's a series. Oh. It's a story. Okay. I see. It's probably about 90% unfactual. It's all unfactual. Well, I gave it 90%, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the part that's true is that there is a government agency called the FBI. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> that's it. That's all you got. Oh, and they have agents. There you go. That that's the other truth. Is that it? <laughs> that's all it. <laughs> all of those shows, everything's made up. Yep. I guarantee you, NCIS does not look like NCIS in the show. Oh wow. And Gibbs does not work there. Oh, I love Gibbs. <laughs> He's supposed to be coming back. That's what you told me. Four or five times? Yeah, something like that. I tell you because I'm excited. I love you. How fast can I press 800 inches of fabric? Watch and find out. Start the clock. Uh, Somebody said the biggest celebrity they ever met, this is from Susan You're Out, was Paul McCartney. Now, see, I never really was into meeting him. You were into the Beatles. Not really. Did you like the monkeys? I did. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. People say we're monkey around. And my favorite was Mickey. I know. I knew you were going to say mm -hmm. that. Favorite was Mickey. Because he's the clown. Um, would you like to hear a piece of trivia? Sure. David Bowie, I think that's how you pronounce it, not Bowie, like is what I've been saying, uh, was actually born as David Jones, but changed his name because he did not want to be confused with Davy Jones, the talentless singer from the Monkees, which is what he said. Love it. <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, Susan, you're out. Met Paul McCartney, not me. I wouldn't mind meeting David Bowie. Is is we always call him David Bowie, and my friend that I used to work with was from England, and she said his name is really Bowie, not Bowie. Bowie, right. Did I say it wrong again? I no, probably I did. did. My favorite monkey was Mickey, too. Yay, you've got good taste. I think Mickey is the only monkey alive. I'm reading the chat. I did not have a favorite monkey. Yeah, I think he's the only one left. Because Michael died, didn't he? Mike Nesmith, he died, right? And I think Peter was dead, and I know Davy's dead. Uh, 
I used to work for a large sheriff's department and we made, we used to make fun of the sheep TV shows. <laughs> That's from Nani. I just assume everything I see on a television show is exaggerated. Yeah. Linda Skinner says that she met Earl J James Earl Jones and his wife. Oh, I would love to meet them. Uh, I think Mar he passed away. Mary Lou Lyon is asking about mixing cottons with batiks. Yes, you can absolutely do that. There is no rule that says you can't. The only thing to keep in mind is that cottons have are denser, as the, they're saying in the chat, and they have a different feel to them, but I use basics and regular cotton with batiks all the time. Michael Nesmith's mom had invented the whiteout. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Oh, Katie says, I was personally friends with Bo Diddley. He was the nicest man I ever met, despite being famous. I don't know Bo Diddley, but Katie knew Bo Diddley. That was funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. My husband loves Bo Diddley. I don't know who, I don't know Bo Diddley. He's a singer. Oh. I just know the saying, you don't know Bo Diddley. You don't know Diddley is the saying. Oh. Well, now it's Bo Diddley, okay? Okay. <laughs> Linda said, I wrote a $100,000 check to Placido Domingo. And I know I chopped that name. And then wrote in parentheses, I did payroll at an opera house. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know who that was. I don't know, but if you're writing out $100,000 checks, I don't need all of that, but I'll take some. <laughs> take my chair. Yep, S. Taylor is also mentioning that after a few washes, they, they it went feel the same. Sad stitch. How long has that been happening? It'll be okay, Mom. Well, how do I get it back to a straight stitch? Press number three. That was the first one. Okay. Leave it in. It'll be fine. Oh, I see what I did. Mm-hmm. Do I have to tear that out? No, I'd leave it in. Just press it to the side. Oops, wrong way. I don't believe I did that. Uh, Bo Diddley's real name was Elas McDaniels. Elias? E L A S. No. Maybe it was supposed to be Elias. Ooh, Linda said my husband played bass guitar with Alabama when they were at a music festival. Ooh, now that's impressive. Roll on highway. Roll on, roll on. They were so big roll that I finally on. just got out of it. Back. It was like they, I stopped liking them because they were just constantly, that's all you heard. You didn't like them because they were big. You felt they were overplayed. You got tired of hearing it. Yeah. Susie Rose Finley says, I know Frank Ducks do, Frank do. The man, the movie Bloodsport is about. Frank gave me away at my first wedding. He is the godfather of my children. I have no idea who that is. But I'm glad you had that opportunity. I saw Tim Allen at a Starbucks and I froze, forgot his name, my name, and how to walk. <laughs> <laughs> teacups and rose i saw tim allen at a starbucks i froze forgot his name forgot my name and then forgot how to walk <laughs> did you pee on yourself i would have i love tim samantha and uh Holly both have the same last name. I'm suspecting they really know each other and aren't letting on. Oh, Mom. Brenda says, I met Tom Selleck uh, on a plane, and Lordy, he smelled wonderful. Oh, I would love to meet him. <laughs> Isn't he from Ann Arbor? 
don't remember. I think so. My dad played with so many country stars on the Grand Old Opry and made guitar straps for some of them with their names on them with Sarah. That's How about what Sarah... George Strait? Did he play with George Strait? I love George Strait. So does Jason. I do too. <clears throat> I'm worried about his belt buckle getting polished. <laughs> Uh, Rebecca Shank says, my big claim to fame. I met Lassie when I worked for Heinz Pet Products. LOL. <laughs> That's funny. Dang, Lassie hasn't been around for a long, long time. Juanita Hale says, once I got to meet the lead singer of Train, Pat Monahan, backstage. What an experience. Not interested in Train. I don't know who Train is. It's a country group. I think mm. they're a musical group. Susie Rose Finley says, My mom was a seamstress for Amelia Grays of Beverly Hills. When she left to have me, she took two customers with her. Betty Drake, who is Cary Grant's second wife, and THE Elizabeth Taylor. THE. Who has per perfume named after her. Oh, I think she calls it white diamond. Jacket. Yes, Tom Selleck is from Detroit. Tim Allen is also from Michigan. I know, I knew that. Cause I think Tim Allen is probably the Ann Arbor area. No, I think he's closer to Detroit. Oh. But I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, I know, I couldn't remember if Tom Selleck was Detroit or Ann Arbor, but I know the guy that plays in the Dumb and Dumber movies with Jim Carrey, I can never remember his name. He's from Ann Arbor. His blonde... I'd know his name if I heard it. Oh, Samantha and Holly don't know each other. That's interesting. Got two savages in the chat and they met for the first time right here. Tom Selleck was from Girls Park. His father worked for a car company. Forget which one. Well, Southeast Michigan. They all worked for one of them. <laughs> Donna Dixon worked at a manufacturing plant that made Elizabeth Taylor's passion perfume. Ooh. Tom Selleck was flying into Montana and I got to sit right by him. Brenda is still reliving that entire flight. Oh, God. She said he smelled wonderful. Woody, no. Uh, Woody Harrelson oh, is God. not who I was thinking of, but I, somebody else. Peggers F says, I got to make a TV commercial with Ronald McDonald when I was a teenager years ago. Susan Yearout says, I know what that's like. I was working at Skippers in Seattle near where they were filming Rich Man, Poor Man and was stammering when Peter Strauss and Nick Nolte walked in. Oh, Jeff no. Daniels. That's it. Yes, Brenda. Thank you. Jeff Daniels. He's from Ann Arbor. That's who I was thinking of. Is he the brother of Jack? <laughs> Bob Seeger is from Ann Arbor. Yep, we know yeah. that. Yeah, so we know that. We love Bob Seeger. We do. <laughs> Shirley Kessingler uh, met, and her husband met Willie Nelson in a local country fair. Birmingham. Tim Allen is from Birmingham. Yes. I knew it was me. We don't really count that as Detroit because it's not Wayne County, I don't believe. No, it's not. But we'll count it as Michigan. And for those of you curious, Detroit is Wayne County, period. <laughs> and Ann Arbor is Washtenaw. Right. But like when you say, anytime you say Detroit, basically any of the cities in Wayne County. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Everything's gonna be all right. Well, look it up, dummy. I'm in the background scenes for the championship game in Mighty Ducks 3. Woohoo! Fundraiser for the opera. Linda D is on camera. You guys got to go watch Mighty Ducks 3 and see if you can pick out which one Linda D is. Oh, oh. careful, Mom. Donna Hoffler says, I met Hank Aaron in person. He is the nicest man. Uh-oh. Hold up. 
stitches happen with Donna, says Kenny Rogers. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even get the rest of the words out of that one. Kenny Rogers sang Lucille to me on a dance show that she was on. I loved him. She did. Truth. Karen Carr says, my daughter and I had backstage passes and had our picture taken with Kenny Rogers many years ago. Oh, I would have died for that. Lori Clark said, I met Alice Cooper. He is so nice. Alice Cooper is also from Michigan. He is, yep. And apparently extremely smart. Yeah. And his dad was a mortician. I could see that. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> my parents were personal friends with jimmy dean tell oh. him his sandwiches are great wait is he passed yeah. okay don't do that that's weird uh gwendolyn hank says when i was 13 <laughs> back in the good old days wait no hold on it gets really good when I was 13, I met Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck at Disney World. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Sarah says Alice Cooper is a devoted Christian and a really nice guy. I heard that. Martha's Creative Life saw Bra Luke Bryan and Alabama both in concert. Not interesting. Debbie Dunn says, I thought Alice Cooper's dad was a preacher. I met John Denver, John Denver backstage with a co-worker who got the passes. He babysat her kids before he was famous, and he did not remember her. What? Another one that passed on. It is. He passed on way too soon. I met Oprah once, and she was very, very nice. Did she give you a car? I'm not an Oprah fan. I like Oprah. I mean, she's okay. I think she just carries too much too far. All right. We are all pressed, and we have a big pile of strips. So what we're going to do next... This is where things can get a little crazy. Why'd you do that? Why? Because you could. So one of the things that you can do, and this is a personal preference, so I'll walk you through this. When you're putting your jelly roll race together, you're going to find the ends. You have two ends. If you have any more than two ends, you did something wrong, go back and fix it. You have two ends and you're going to put them together and you're going to sew all the way down, all like 400 inches of this. But this can be a little overwhelming for some people because it can be a tangled mess. So if you are the type of person that doesn't want to just pull from this, you can just take a minute to lay things out and kind of accordion fold it, get all right sides together and then just zoom, zoom, zoom and sew. I've done it where I've done it this way. I've also done jelly roll races where I have just picked it up off the floor and figured I would cut it when it got to the point where it was a tangled mess and just sew it then. The reality is either way works. Mom, do you lay, do you line everything up on that first seam and sew it or do you just pull from the pile and go? I just pull from the pile. That's what we're gonna do. No, I cut it at the bottom. Oh, you cut it already? So, like, you go like this, or do you wait until you sew yours to cut it? I wait until I sew all mine together, then cut. Yeah, when you join the first two rows. Yep. See, what I was pointing out is I'm not going to take the time on this, and so I sit here doing it anyway. I wasn't going to take the time to sit and clip and pin this all together to keep it all nice and tidy and organized because as I'm doing that, it's just creating a pile over here that's gonna be messy. So I'm just gonna let it sit on the floor or in my lap or on the table, probably on the table would be better because it'd be less drag and less weight. We're gonna match up our seams and we're just gonna start to sew. And then as we're going, we can manage 
all of this. I feel like one of those magicians that's pulling fabric out of someone's nose. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Like, people are asking, how do you keep it straight? I don't. I just leave it up there and I pull a little bit and I sew. The reality is I'm not going to sew all 400 inches of this at once without stopping. That would be really cool and a lot of fun, but it's not what's going to happen. I'm going to sew a little bit, stop, position the next bit, and sew that. Stop position, and sew. And you're just going to keep doing that until you have this whole thing folded on top of itself and sewn together. This is a great time that if you have a stitch guide, a seam guide, a magnetic seam guide or something, put it up there and then you don't have to overthink about your seam allowance you just let the fabric go in and your whole point all you're doing is just looking at the fabric that's several inches before the foot and making sure that those raw edges are lined up you're not pulling the fabric in any way you're not pushing it in you're letting the feed dogs do the work and then as you start to get this um, tangled mess here just salute, untangle it you will end up and you'll see this because we'll get through this whole seam tonight. You will end up pushing kind of a mess towards the bottom and I'll show you how you can deal with that. You're just gonna cut it. But there's no sense really in, fr in the frustration of trying to get all this neatly folded and piled up to sew. If that's what makes you happy though, then do that. But I would much rather be making progress on the quilt. It's not, it's not productive time getting it all organized that way. Unless it makes the experience enjoyable for you. If it makes the experience enjoyable for you, then by all means do it. I just feel like my time is better used just sewing it as and organizing it as I go. not worrying about the whole pile or even the stuff that's in my lap. I'm just worrying about the fabric that is from the needle to the edge of the table. And that's probably only about 10 or 12 inches worth of fabric. Linda says, I love that these seams don't have to be perfect. As long as each seam is consistent with itself, you're golden. And it gives the practice and experience to make your seams more perfect. Absolutely. This is just about consistency and sewing a straight line. It doesn't have to be a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be a half of an inch. It could be a full inch if you really wanted it to. Just keep in mind that the bigger your seam allowance is, the more fabric you are putting into the seam, which means the smaller your quilt's going to be. But this is a very easy beginner friendly sew which i think this is so great doing it on a live stream if i'm being completely honest tiffany's done them i've done them i think a lot of people have done these on live streams before but it helps you see that even those quilts like jenny doan i just watched the tutorial today no joke jenny doan has a video that's years old out there on a jelly roll race and she said in that video and you can have the quilt done in an hour you guys i'm two hours in Come on. It feels like when you're done because it went so quick. After this part, it goes really quick, right? And so it feels like, oh, yeah, I could do that in an hour. It was so fast. But it's not. It's not that fast. Is it an afternoon or an evening so? Could you whip it up in three or four hours? Yes, absolutely. An hour? I don't even know if Tiffany could do this in an hour. 
I'd pay money to see her try, though. You heard it, Tiff. <laughs> oh, Tiffany doesn't know that I've got ideas for her. <laughs> I'm back now. I always feel somewhat better after shower and fully lotioning. Hey, Tiffany fully lotioned her body. You didn't need any help? You got this afternoon. Yeah. It's almost 10 o'clock. We're going to go a little long, guys, because I'm going to get through the first seam and start working on the second one before I end the live stream so you can see what to do. Sorry. You're welcome to stop watching. You can always come back and watch the rest of it later if you want to. But I'm going to keep going. I don't think Donna's going live tonight either, so. Oh, she's not. She's not no, going well. no, she's not feeling well. She's getting some rest, much needed rest. I saw a license plate today on my way into work. I took a picture of it and sent it to her. I was like, this reminds me of you. The license plate was FVR Ying. And I was like, oh, forever Ying. Because <laughs> she goes by Ying. Her grandkids call her Ying. So I thought that was fun. Oh, what did Streamlabs do to you, Susie? What did your message say? Hold on. Come on, mouse. I met David Coverdale, lead singer for Whitesnake at the 1985 MTV Awards show. He was talking me up. Tawny Catane was his girlfriend at the time. Tanya Catane. Yeah, that's right. I think I said that right the second time. Do we have, oh yes, Debbie, we do. We have a Zoom on Sunday at two o'clock for the VIP members. I will make sure an email goes out with the link for you, but it is in the VIP section of the website. Normally the emails go out a week ahead of time. And I think just with all the chaos of work, I didn't have time to get that scheduled to go out. So I'll try to remember to do that tonight or tomorrow. Hmm. Forever young, I want to be forever young. Mom, I'm going to take the afternoon off on Friday, a week from today, mm -hmm. because I'm going to have to go into the office, but we have our hair and our pedicure appointments. So I think I'm going to try to get the afternoon off. Plus, next weekend is a three-day weekend. Yep. Woo, woo, three-day weekend. Yep. Which means the countdown for me leaving will be on. You better get those quilts done. I'm trying. <laughs> Make a note so you can remember that way. Hey Siri, remind me to send the email. There's my note. Uh, I'm not playing that game. Yo, what up? Cheers. I need help. Oh. Wave to your public. They can't see your face, just your body. <laughs> 
What time is the whatnot sale? Five o'clock tomorrow. When will you stream this? Will you stream the sale on YouTube again, please? Um, I had technical difficulties when I did that. My computer isn't play, paying ni ugh, playing nicely, so I can't guarantee that I'll be able to. But you can always just watch from whatnot. You can go to, you don't even have to have the app installed. You can just go to it in a browser. You can always watch from just on whatnot. You don't have to buy anything. I've got something going on with the power supply for my Mac. There were the processes to stream to whatnot and YouTube simultaneously, like I did last week, was so, it consumed the power so much that my battery ended up like being completely deleted because it couldn't do it off just the plug power. I think I need a new plug. Uh, so as a result, what ended up happening is I didn't realize I was draining my battery that quickly and everything just kind of grinded to a halt and the sale got the, the sale got messed up and I couldn't recover the technology. It was, it was bad. So I don't think I will do it to YouTube again until I can get some hardware things fixed with the power supply. Um, but you're always more than welcome to just watch it on whatnot. There's a live chat over there too. It's a lot of fun. You don't even have to create an account if you want to watch it over there. You can just watch. But if you want to talk in the chat, you'll have to do it that way. But to buy, you have to be registered. What's up, Mom? I said, but in order to buy, buy you need to be registered. Yeah, yeah, you do. You have a payment. Oh, yeah. On file. Yep, yep, yep. The further you get along in this, the more you start to have a lot of these pieces starting to get tangled. And so you'll find that you'll have to stop and untangle more frequently. but I would have had to stop and untangle to pin. And so it could be that right now I'm, I've only pinned all this and then I have to go back and sew it. So I don't know. I just don't know that there's necessarily a huge benefit in my lane for pinning this together. Hello, Maritza. Is that a batik jelly roll? Yes! This is Hummingbird Lane by Robert Kaufman. You missed all the fun earlier where I kept telling people I didn't know and then I went dumpster diving for the tag. That was fun. Meanwhile, you had a subscribe uh, viewer who pulled it up. <laughs> You're right. It's like, I know exactly what fabric that is. Hello, Digital Donna. Jelly rolls are not done yet, Digital Donna. We are still in progress. I'm not sure what you mean of the end result. Nobody won. It's not really a race. It's just a fun term. Uh, but if you're asking for how big it'll be, before borders, these will measure around 48 inches by 60-ish inches. <laughs> Your bobbin goes a long way. Hey, Robin, don't, don't jinx my bobbin. Watch me run out now. <gasps> Linny signed up for QuiltCon. Yay! Are you taking any classes or workshops? I am not. Not right now, anyway. That might change. Flippy, flippy. What is a jelly roll race? Honestly, it's just a jelly roll quilt. They call it a race because when you get to this point where you just have all of your strips sewn together end to end, 
it's fun to race each other to see who can get the quilt top assembled because once all the strips are put together, this part goes really quickly, it feels like. Comparatively, when you think about like how long it takes for a quilt to really be made, right? I want to be forever young. Taking a lecture as most classes are booked. I'm wondering if they kept some of those class seats reserved for the public sale that'll open on September 1. Because a lot of times when you get pre-sale for like concerts and stuff, they only open up a portion of the tickets for like the people that have access to the pre-sale. That's right, Tiff. That's what I'm doing too. If you guys don't know, Tiffany is going to QuiltCon in North Carolina. She will be booking, booking, she'll be rooming with me and Mary. Ian is coming too, and he is rooming with someone else because he's a boy and boys are icky. Yep. But more importantly, there's three of us and only one king size bed. So, and a couch. There's no room for him in our room. He has to get his own room. But we'll be hanging out with every, like, it'll probably be the four of us hanging out for most of the time while we're there. Maybe, maybe even five of us. Maybe Donna will be hanging out with us. Sean's going to be there on Saturday. Sean from the guy who sews, I believe, is going on Saturday. It's only a couple hour drive, so he's going to drive in for the day, it sounds like. I know there's going to be lots of others, I think. Uh, Stephanie from Memoirs of a Long Arm Quilter might be going. I don't know. I don't know who's going. I've lost track. I know I've heard lots of content creators were going to prioritize going to Raleigh. I don't know who's all going now. I know Karen Brown is going. Um, I know one of the things that, but she goes to all of them, I think. Um, I would assume that, uh, like Jenny Doan or someone from Missouri Star will make their faces no seen, I guess. I never saw them last year, but I heard they were there. I don't know who else is going. I know at one point there was talk of a lot of content creators going, like a lot of smaller YouTubers. And then trying to do some sort of a collaborative meetup where we could all be in one central location and everybody could kind of roam around and meet and take pictures with and do all sorts of fun stuff like that, which I think would be great. But I just don't think our schedules are going to be able to work that out. I think everybody's coming different days and we have different plans. So everybody will organize their own meetups rather than having one meetup to rule them all. You still have bobbin thread? Yes, yes, I do. I was going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Although, wouldn't that suck if I looked down and all of that wasn't being sewn? Thank you for helping remind me to check. Yeah, you'd be a tad upset. <sighs> Bill let the cat out of the bag. He's rooming with Ian. Bill from Atlanta? Yep. That's cool. They're in the boys' room. The boys' room. The boys' room, because boys are icky. Like... I, I want to ask the front desk staff to put, like, Bill and Ian's room next to mine, Tiffany, and Mary's. And I'm going to put a sign on my door that says, No boys allowed. No. <laughs> Ian is cracking up, isn't it? <laughs> and then Ian will walk right in and be like, that's fine. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. You can put whatever sign up you want. Here I am. What are you going to do about it? He'd yeah, be like, I'm just one of the girls. Here I am. How's mom's quilt coming along? How's it coming along, mom? It's she fine. is sewing her strips end to end to make her big, long piece. I'm still on the first one that never ends. Yeah, she's making her big, long piece of 
two and a half inch piece of fabric. Still got a few to go. <laughs> VR said, boys are icky. That's why we married them, right? That's right. That's right. I married mine because they had a sense of humor. You said had. Well. Like past tense. Yeah. Do you not find him comical anymore? Not as much. <laughs> mine thinks he's hilarious. He laughs at himself. Rick laughs at himself. Jason does not need me for an audience. He entertains himself. Rick has his moments where he's funny, but some of the stuff he says and does is I was done with 30 years ago. Tiffany, I think that's an excellent idea. She won't be far. She should definitely do it. Mom, are you going to quilt con? Nope. Too much walking for this old lady. <laughs> I'm going to get a stroller and push Tiffany in it. You should. Uh, actually, she could take that walker yeah. that that Brenda left here. We could, because it's still here, we could take the walker for her. And instead of her using it as a walker, I'm going to make her sit in it like we put Harvey in. And I'm going to push her around. <laughs> They're like, quilts are coming through. Watch out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder if we could rent one of those EVs like we do at Disney World for Quilt Con so that Tiffany has it. And then, spoiler alert, the basket on the EV we could use for all of our shopping. Tiffany, what do you think? Should we get you an EV with a basket and a horn? Like, yeah. meep, meep. <laughs> yep, still got bobbin. Okay. Just checking. Oof. Ooh, they have hover rounds. She can rent a scooter. She could, I want to, I want her to rent something with a basket on the front so I can put her teeth in it like I did with mom at Disney World. Well, then don't throw them out. You guys, the story is, so when I took mom to Disney World, she had just gotten dentures and they didn't fit. They were too big. Is that what it was, mom? They were too yes. big to hurt your mouth. And they so. Too big it would stay in my mouth. Got it. So we go eat and mom takes her dentures out of her mouth and she wraps them in paper towels, brown paper towels. So it looked like trash. And doesn't put them in her bag, doesn't put them in the denture container. He puts them wrapped in brown paper towels inside of the basket on her scooter. And so I was putting something in her scooter for her and I was like, well, let me get rid of the trash. Cause she also had like, an empty cup in there and wrappers from something. And so I was like, well, there's a trash can right there. Let me empty the basket. So I just picked everything up. I walked over, dumped it in the trash. And as soon as I did, it dawned on me that I just threw my mother's teeth away at Disney World. So yes, I went dumpster diving at the Magic Kingdom to get my mom's teeth. You're welcome. <laughs> Weren't they by the top? Though? They were on the top, yeah. It was just sitting right there on the top. I was like, oh, no. Mom. <laughs> and then in true fat and true Becca form, I was like, why did you wrap them in the paper? <laughs> yeah, you got pretty nasty. I did. Well, I was frustrated. I was like, you, did, you had all these things and you wrapped them in brown paper towel. It looked like trash. I wasn't frustrated with her. I was frustrated with me. It was the situation. It I was think. the whole thing. It was hot. I was dealing with two kids and my mom. Mom hadn't been feeling well. It was the whole... That was a horrible trip to the happiest place on earth. Do I still have bobbin thread? Yes. Yes, I do. I was a good daughter, Nancy Jean said. See, Nancy? I was a good daughter. I said that you were a good daughter. I was just very frustrated. 
in the moment. But I wanted to hit you in the throat when you started yelling at me. <laughs> Punch you in the throat? <laughs> Rebecca Dawn. That's how I. That that's what she said when she wanted to punch me in the throat when I was growing up. Dumpster diving for dentures. We have a winning story. <laughs> and then we went to see Beauty and the Beast, and I realized I was sick. That's. It was like all of those things, kind of. No, Beauty and the Beast was at um, Hollywood Studios. But I think that was like the next day. So Donna Hoskins wants me to stop and scroll up for her comment. Okay. Tiffany would find a way to disconnect the governor. She'd be zooming around. <laughs> Sandra says, sorry, missed you and your mom in your life. Catching up on the replay. It's not the replay. It's still the live. Hi. H to the I. Unless you're watching it from the beginning, in which case, hi, about two hours and ten minutes in. <laughs> At least I got all my starching done. You did. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done with the scene that never ends. I have learned over the years, and mom has watched this kind of play out, but it's been the past few years. There are several things that trigger me and make me get frustrated very easily. And it's not necessarily that I'm frustrated with the other person. I just get easily frazzled. And that moment with the dentures was like the highlight of one of them. It was hot. I was taking care of a preschooler. And my preteen nephew taking care of mom. It was like all of the things. And I was, I think I was just really overstimulated and I didn't even know that was a thing. But we got the, I did the right thing. Like I, I went and got him. I think a bit set. I felt bad because I was like, now mom's got to put those in her mouth. <laughs> Mom, you put Disney trash in your mouth. They didn't go in my mouth that day. No, but at some point they did. After they were in a bowl of cleaner. <laughs> did you not bring your purse to the park that day? I can't remember. I don't. Probably not. Probably not. <gasps> Do you remember the time at Magic Kingdom when it was time to go back to the room? And we decided we were going to take the monorail and I'm pushing Zoe in a stroller and your scooter battery died. Yep. And I had to push the stroller and push your scooter up the ramp to the monorail. And so the way I had to do that, <laughs> I got Zoe's stroller right up behind mom's scooter. <laughs> I was pushing them both up the ramp. She's not lying. <laughs> the whole time, like, damn it, the stupid battery won't charge, 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 charge. I was so hot and so worn out by the time I got up to the top of that ramp. That was so much. Because it wasn't just the stroller. It wasn't just going uphill. It wasn't just the weight of the ECV. It wasn't just your, like, you being in a wheel. It was all of it. But I did it, dang it. What you didn't realize, or neither did I, those batteries are only good for eight hours. Yeah. And we had been out all day. Happy birthday, Mary Lou Lyon. We had been at it all day. That was the other thing. Like, it was at the end of the, end yeah, of the day. It was dark out. Like, it, after the fireworks. It was time to go back. We had to deal with the crowds getting out. I couldn't ask you to get out and walk up it because I don't think you could have walked that ramp. Probably not. That was, this, that was the trip, too, where we had to go 
and um, like we had to call the ECV company because I think there was something wrong with your battery and they met us in a park and replaced your scooter, remember? And then it died. I don't remember that. They didn't charge good. Mm. I remember you having a problem getting it started and it was user error and we got it going and it was fine. Yeah. But I don't remember the second one having charging problems. I remember you had problems oh. remembering to plug it in because you kept seeing it. You kept seeing the thing on full. So you thought you didn't need to charge it after a day at the park. And then we get an hour in and it was empty. Well, you weren't very happy about that either. They weren't? You weren't. Oh, uh, no. And it wasn't because it wasn't because of you. It was just the whole situation, right? Because now I got to get now I've got that problem to solve while dealing with the five year old who wants to do this and dealing with the preteen who wants to do that and having nobody there to help me. So it was almost like being at Disney World as a single parent with three kids and all of them wanting different things all the time. It was hard. After I finish this row, I'm going to bed. I don't blame you. You've had a long week. You've done a lot this week. And the one I really... Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Mm. The one I most wanted to finish, I've been waiting on. The what? The one I want to finish the most, I've been waiting for strips. Okay, well, I'll cut those tonight or tomorrow, and you'll have That's them. That's fine. I've got something. Because that one you should be able to get done this weekend. That's an easy quilt. But I wanted to quilt on the long arm, too. Oh, it, well, the backing's loaded. The batting's there. But until the sa the whatnot sale is done and we get the stuff off the back of the long arm, nobody's using that. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> I am almost to the end of the first seam. So this is what I was telling you. As you're going, you're going to get to the to a part where all of this is a kind of like tangled down on itself. And so you can just take a minute to address it and untangle it so it's all right sides together but if this is too much of a tangled mess and it's rolled and twisted over too much you can just kind of smooth it out find where the middle is snip it and then will that'll make it easier for you to unravel or get them laying right sides together just hang it down so that you can find the middle otherwise you're going to waste some fabric I think I'm going to call it tonight. Okay. Just set your microphone down. Okay, I Hey, I get it. You have had a long week. Go get some rest and I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. There we go. So this is our first strip, our first seam. And from here, it gets less and less and less and less. So right now, I'm just gonna throw that on the floor. <clears throat> you have bonus points for not having to twist that, right? Just stop and stretch and that doesn't always happen. I don't know what happened. So now when I open this up, I have two strips together, right? And so I personally, you don't have to do this, but personally, I like to take the time to press this all the way down. My iron's not on. So I would take, I'm going to finger press it right now while the iron's heating up. So I'm just going to go through, doesn't matter which direction you press this in because you're not nesting any seams. But it's a good idea. I always like to stop and press every step of the way just because I feel like it makes the quilt product a little bit uh, crisper, a little bit flatter, and it just, it's easier to work with. 
So you're going to do that all the way down. You're going to open it up. And then I'm just going to pretend that I did it the entire length to show you what your next step is. So let me do this end so it looks like I did it both. Oh, see, uh, one thing, I can't open this up because my little fold is here and I didn't cut. So to set this up so that I can open it up, I'm just going to cut just like a 16th of a piece off. Will all of those diamond shapes go in the same direction? I'm going to guess probably not, but I honestly don't know. Maybe they will. They did when I put them together, but... Um, we'll find out. It looks like they will because I've got two of them here. So I'm thinking they will. So what's going to happen is now I have these two pieces together. I'm going to lay them out like this and then I'll put them on top of here. And that process that I did to sew the two single rows together, now I'm going to sew each of the rows of two together. So I have two and two and I'm going to sew those together along that long strip. But before we do, I'm going to press this. Is Mama Nancy using the white spacers on hers too? No, she's not. She's not doing any spacers on hers at all. Oh no, Sarah says, okay, I'm stopping for the night. Once I make a mistake, I stop. Once I make a mistake that I notice, I stop. Got it. I'm sorry. Is your mom living with you now? Jenny Harris is asking. No, not yet, but she does come and spend uh, several weeks with me. So she'll come up and spend a month and then go home for a month and then come up for another month. Over the, over the um, not spring, I keep wanting to say spring, over the fall though, I doubt she'll be up very much. I don't think she's planning to come back up here until after Christmas. October is a pretty busy month for us in our home because we've got three birthdays that summer or that month. Plus, I usually have lots of work projects that have to happen in the September, October time frame. So I get pretty busy with other things. In November, she prioritizes Thanksgiving with her husband's family down where they live. And she also takes a trip to go see um, my, one of my sisters, they spend some time together right after Thanksgiving. So her trips in the fall are usually focused around my baby sister. And then after Christmas, she comes up here for, she always says it's a week, but then she ends up staying. <laughs> she likes being up here because Rick is a homebody. He doesn't really get out and do anything. But when she's here, we do do things. Check the bobbin, Bernie says. A good idea. I will. Oh, the jelly roll sizzle. I did do that. It's a lot of fun. I've done that. It's a cute quilt. I like the change up of your ironing mat, Marlene says. Thank you. I like to change it out every so often because I do use Best Press a lot, so it does get pretty stiff. Oof. Now for this, I probably would have taken it over to my ironing board 
just because I would have gotten a much bigger ironing surface. And so I could have pressed, I think, a little bit faster. But since I don't have a camera over there, and I like to do the things on camera so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm using my little pressing mat and just moving my arms as fast as they'll go. It's almost like a little cardio workout. Ice cream sandwich time, Tiffany. What? Where's mine? Congratulations on your last year before retirement. I've met a couple of people that retired within the past couple of years and have already gone back. They're like, I'll just go back part time. They wanted something to do. Oh no, I just washed my covered, Gwen says. I pre-soaked it in the sink and oh my gosh, the color of the water from the starch. <laughs> How many si times do you sew the strips? Um, one and one makes two, and then you double that to make four, and then you double that to make eight, and then you double that to make 16, and then you double that to make 32, so five times. And the first one is the longest. By the time you get past the, like, because every time you do it, you have half the distance, right? So it takes half the amount of time. No, the top will not be in the same color order that I sewed this in. The colors will get mixed up a bit. That's why I was saying, like, at the beginning, you have a design choice. You can sit and painstakingly place every one of those strips exactly where you want them to touch. But at the end of the day, because you're folding and sewing on top of each other and just doubling your strip sets, you're going to end up, it's going to end up feeling a bit more scrappy. So just lean into the knowledge that the jelly roll is designed to look good together. And just embrace that and let the colors fall where they may. Susie says, I am planning to retire before June 2024. I am done working for other people. Pat says, I retired after teaching for 31 years, 21 of them with grade 7, 8. I was eligible to retire after 26 years. I'm doing my 20 and getting out. How good is your iron? Amazing. But this is the WL607 Panasonic cordless iron. The WL600 I actually do have. It's on my pressing surface on the other side of the room. It is not as good as this one. It does not stay hot like this one does. This one stays hot for days. I feel like I've heard people say, my cordless iron, I can't even get through starching fabric. It doesn't stay hot enough. I was like, I don't know why it's that way. Mine's not like that. And then I got my hands on one of those and now I know exactly what they're talking about. They're not wrong. The 600, WL600, that model is inferior to this one. This is the 607. This is the model that, so yeah, and um, Fat Quarter Shop, and I think Missouri, no, Missouri Star, I don't think they sell, but it's the one that like, so yeah, sells. I know so yeah sells this model. Worth every penny. Best investment ever.
Brenda says that she has a lot of respect for teachers. All right, what do you think guys? Should I finish this tonight? We're half an hour past when I normally quit, but I'm feeling the mojo. I don't think Donna's live tonight, so I'm not stepping on her toes. Normally I like to end at 10 so that people can go over and enjoy what she's working on, but I don't think she's live. What if I keep going and I have this done? At least the rows put together, what do you think? Tiffany said that it's the ceramic sole plate that makes the difference, I think. Maybe, but I'm telling you, it is better than the other one. Hello, Judith in Alexandria, Kentucky. Go for it. Go for it. Keep going. Go for it. Go for it. Awesome. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take a minute just to, this does help me keep it a little bit more organized. I run the fabric through my thumb and forefinger, just making sure that it's all face up, right? There's no twists and turns this way. And then if it twists or turns down there when it's on the floor, that's fine. But at least I'm not just picking it up and throwing it on the floor. I don't know why I feel like this helps me, but I do, and so I do it. Plus it gives me another chance to touch all the pretty fabric. Ha <laughs> ha! And the pressing that I just did was not so much for the block or for the fabric as it was just to get the seam pressed in a specific in a direction. So I didn't have so that the seam was pressed kind of like open and laying flat. All right. Here's my next piece. And now this is what I've got. I'm gonna put this on top of here. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. Keep going. I enjoy watching and seeing how it goes. Awesome. Keep going, we're having fun. Fine, we will. I don't have any seams to nest. I'm just matching up those raw edges just like I did before. And we're gonna go all the way down, but this time it's gonna take half the time that that first seam did because I have half the distance. I am gonna pick all this up and put it on the table though. No, I'm not. What am I doing? I just need to get it so it's not hooked around that because that's causing drag. There we go. <sighs> oh, who the heck changed the speed of my machine? So I've been sitting here going, Man, I bet I did it when I was helping Harvey sew. So I've been putting my foot all the way down, all the way down, pedal to the metal. I'm like, man, I thought this machine used to be faster than that. Man, maybe I'm getting too used to the speed. It was halfway between the middle button. It was like two thirds of the way up. Now let's go. There we go. That's cooking with gas. Shoo. I forgot to check my bobbin, but every time I stop and adjust, I'm going to look backwards to make sure I'm still stitching. Normally when I run out of bobbin, I can hear a difference in the stitch. So I'll just be very careful, but it does mean that I might have to go back and restitch just a little bit. No, I don't like it on my leg. I did this before, didn't I? 
where I just pulled it like this. Because remember, I made the joke about it. Felt like I was a clown. Ashley Shepard says, hello, Becca. Since you're talking about your sewing quilting investments, what model Juki do you have? It's so overwhelming narrowing down brands and models between Juki, Bernina, Janome, etc. I have two sewing machines. Um, one is my mom's and one is mine, and they are vastly different machines, but I love them both. And they do different things very well. I feel like you're comparing apples and oranges. So the model, that, the machine that I am sewing on right now is a Juki TL 2010Q. I love this machine, but it is a straight stitch only machine. It's loud, it goes fast, and that's really all it does. It just does one stitch. This thing's amazing. My mom sews on my Baby Lock. It's a Baby Lock Aria. It's a computerized machine with a nice big throat and tons of LED light, so it's super, super bright but it does all the things, all the stitches, all the computer stuff, all the gadgets, tells you that the bobbin's about to run out, threads the needle, all the things. But I feel like those two machines, while they are both sewing machines, it's like comparing apples and oranges. This is a manual machine. It is intended to do a straight stitch and only a straight stitch and nothing else and do it very well. And it gives you all of the control over all of the settings for that straight stitch, whereas my mom's machine is really more like, hey, don't think about how a sewing machine needs to operate. Just put the fabric in and we'll take care of it for you. Two different machines, two different purposes. If I had to choose one of those two, obviously I'm gonna choose the Juki. This is, my perf this is the machine that I sew the most on. When I need a zigzag, I'll pull out the baby lock, but 99% of the time I'm coming here and using this. This same machine, most, uh, most sewing machine manufacturers have a straight stitch only machine that is just like this. Janome has, I think it's called the 1600 uh, something, 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 Janome 1600 something. And it does 1600 stitches a minute where this one only does 1500. Um, brother has the brother 1500 PL something, something. It's just like the brother version of this Juki. Baby lock has the accomplish same, same machine. Still got stitches coming out the bobbin. That's good. Sorry if this has been answered earlier, but did you say where you bought your jelly roll? I was in and out and possibly missed the answer. I think I got the jelly roll from Heavenly Stitches in Kingsport, Tennessee. We did determine that it is Hummingbird Lane by Robert Kaufman Batiks. But actually, no, I know I didn't get it from there. I got the jelly roll from So Classic Fabrics in Harrisonburg. I know this because I remember walking by. I remember vividly picking it up there now. So it was in Harrisonburg that I got the jelly roll. Harrisonburg, Virginia. So classic fabrics. I remember because when I picked it up, I was like, ooh, this looks a lot like the jelly roll. I picked up and looked at it and thought about getting it. And I was like, no, it looks like the jelly rolls that I had bought and did the Bargello with. And then I thought, you know what? I didn't keep that quilt and I really did like the fabric. And I want to buy something from the store. So I ended up buying the jelly roll. And now here it is, not even a month later. And I've already used it. Isn't that great? You need to move your, oh, sorry. It went into my shirt. Thank you. I had just moved it. Yep. So for those of you that couldn't tell, because the mic went inside of my shirt. The jelly roll was bought from So Classic Fabrics. Hummingbird Lane by Robert Kaufman Batiks. Still got stitches coming out the back. Finish the top, two and a half hours to do. Awesome, Bambi. I've been sitting and chatting in between, so I'm a little ways behind you. Oh, and there's my bobbin. Cool, right there. 
Let's get that empty bobbin out. Put a drop of oil in there. There we go. Marlene, this is definitely a very, very, very beginner friendly quilt. My mom's a newbie to the world of quilting and she has done two of these already and is working on her third. It is a great project to practice sewing a consistent straight line. It's very forgiving, very easy to do. You got three or four hours. I, for a beginner, it'll take longer, but a seasoned quilter, probably about three to four hours, maybe a little less, a little more, depending on your skill set. My stitching. Yes. As you start getting bigger with this and you're multiplying your rows as you're starting to build, like your rows are getting bigger, your quilt's getting bigger, the tangled mess becomes, I think, a little bit more pronounced. So I feel like I'm stopping more frequently to untangle than I did in that first seam. So just be aware of that. Just keep following the rhythm, right? Like, sew a little bit, straighten a little bit, sew a little bit, straighten a little bit. Jessica said, first time solely sewing since my surgery in April. I'm making a th cathedral window pillow. I've never done this technique before and I'm nervous. Cathedral windows are gorgeous. We should do one one night. They take a ton of fabric. I love the way they look. There we go. Yep, still good. What's going on with that? I got a ruffle right there somehow. I'm just inspecting my stitches to make sure everything's okay. Everything looks good. Something, I think I just got something bunched up underneath the needle. Okay, we're back in business. Oh my gosh, see what I told you about it getting to be a tangled mess now? It is a tangled mess! <laughs> Tiffany said, okay, I just ate two ice cream sandwiches just so you can have one. You're so kind. I love you. I will make sure to have all the ice cream when you come in February for my birthday. It's my birthday month in February. Actually, you're coming for QuiltCon, but you know what I mean. It's just twisting on itself.
but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <sighs> What's the best color thread for all quilt tops? Marlene, I like, um, right now I'm using Dove Gray, which is 2600. It's a great neutral that blends with just about everything. I tend to go with a cream color. It's a 6720, I think is the number of it. For my piecing, that's usually like my white, it's like a soft cream color, but it reads it, it reads as a white type of thread. And then if I need a black, I usually go with 2625. And if I need a gray, a light gray, I go with the 2600. I just, I do have other colors of thread on my thread wall. However, most of the time I'm piecing. And on this machine, I don't really ever do any quilting or very seldom do I do top stitching. So you're not gonna see the thread most of the time. If I have like black fabric and I need a dark thread, I go with my dark thread, 2625. If I have white fabric or light colored fabric and I need a light colored thread, I'll go either 6722 or 2600. Both of those are colors from Aurifil. Um, but that's it. Now my quilting thread wall is a little bit different. I keep uh, a few different colors on hand that I use that are great with just about any quilt top I'll throw up on the long arm. I like using pastels because when I'm quilting, I'm really just trying to add the texture. I don't want the stitches. I don't want the thread color to be too dark. And most of my quilts are lighter in color. They're not lots of dark, heavy colors. So there's that. That's my two cents anyway. Okay, come on. It's twisting on itself. I know this one's going to twist. I'm going to get to show you what that looks like at the end. You get to the point where it's all twisted. I think I am anyway. We need a long arm session with you. Just saying. Yeah, I know. We'll do that one Friday night. It's, it's actually a whole lot easier now. I've got the technology that'll let me do that. I just haven't because I keep forgetting I can. And I haven't had the ability to get, I just haven't. I've been lazy and I've been deprioritizing it. It's been far easier to send quilt tops out for quilting than to actually stand and stitch. But yeah, I do, I do want to get, I've got a backing loaded and I think it's, it, I don't think it's enough. I think it's only enough for one quilt. I had intended to load a whole 108 bolt, but it just didn't work out that way. And I think I just got a three yard cut of a 108 up there so I think I can only do one quilt and my hope was I think I'll do it next time my hope is to take a whole 108 bolt of neutral and put it on there so I can do like three quilts back to back boom boom or more I can just start knocking out quilt they'll all have the same back it'll be neutral it'll be great but I won't have to stop and load and unload I did that about a year ago with some smaller projects I just put a little bit of backing up there and I loaded a bunch of small projects. So I feel like if I do this, then I can load like Ursula Minor. And uh, because most of the quilts that I have are really throw size. So I could probably get a lot done that way. We'll see. I do have a, I do have a backing up there now with some batting. It is reserved for mom's quilting though. She wants to put a, her jelly roll race on it and do some quilting on it. I may do some smaller quilt tops off in the sides, though. Okay, come on. 
Come on, let's go! So close. Wow. Thought it was in my lap. Have a little bit more than that to do. I'm going to run out of thread up top. Not in the same, but probably the next one. Okay. So this is the last stretch. It's within arm's length. So I'm just going to take a minute to organize the fabric so that the right sides are all together. It is twisted a bit. So we're going to, there we go. Nice. Nice. Just untwist it, put it right sides together, and then finish up the seam. So this is number two, the second of five seams. Okay, turn the iron on. Another untwisted run. Woohoo! Cut before you sew the end. It's easier, Becca. Okay, we're going to do it your way this time, Tiffany. Hey Donna, how are you feeling? I think you canceled your live, so I went li I went long. If you didn't cancel your live, I am so sorry. Hey Day, what are you ladies doing tonight? I thought you did. Okay. I'm going to start pressing from the back so I can see the seams. There we go. Some like it hot. Some like it not. No? Okay. Grandchildren had to meet the squad night to kick off the season. So Sassy used up my time for me. Ah, gotcha. How is she doing? You can see how the colors start to do their own thing. You just can't plan a jelly roll race. That's right. Just let the colors do their thing. Just take comfort in knowing that they'll all work together because they were on the same jelly roll. Don't worry about who's going to sit next to who. There's no seating arrangements with the jelly roll race because they're just going to ignore you and sit where they want anyway. Part two of Harvest Delivery. Gotcha. That's that truck that you guys are doing, right? Do you need to iron as you go or can you iron at the end? You can iron at the end. I'm choosing to iron as I go. This is a personal preference. You don't have to do it as you go. You can do it all the way at the end. I don't like to press big, unruly, 
<laughs> really sit alone or no. <laughs> Um, I don't like to press big unruly quilt tops that haven't had any pressing done. So this to me is the equivalent of not having to press the whole quilt top at once. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I thought so. I thought yours was done. What kind of backing will you use? I don't know. I will tell you my secret for backing. I have stopped trying to make all the backs for my quilts matchy matchy. I have a long arm. I have a Moda account. And so rather than buying like wide backs for every quilt or yardage for every quilt that match, exactly match from that fabric line and everything, I will do it if it's a special quilt. I just buy bolts of neutrals. I've been loving the thatched line by Robin Pickens, I think is who it is. That's been great. She's got a wide variety of colors. Moda, I don't like a solid on the back. I want some texture to it. Um, but that's, that's honestly what I've been doing. Just buy a bolt of 108, cut off a three yard piece, put it on the long arm. Or if I'm feeling a little saucy, put the whole day on bolt on the long arm and just get as many quilts done as possible. Now, if it's a special quilt or a special gift, well, I guess that would be a special quilt. If it's a special quilt, I might put a little bit more thought into the backing. Or if it's like a block of the month that offers a backing kit, maybe I'll grab that. But if they're just quilt tops I'm making, like I said, unless there's a special thing for the quilt, it's just a neutral for the back. Just get it done. I'm getting hot. It's that iron, isn't it? Brenda pieces a lot of her backings because it's less scraps. You guys are going to have to see. Uh, I'll talk about it in a Tuesday video, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. A special project that I'm doing with some scraps from a block of the month. I'm really, I've got some ideas going to be fun. <sighs> Almost done pressing this one. It goes faster and faster and faster. But right now, it's not going fast enough. <laughs> As Taylor says, she quilts all of her quilts with flannel on the back. Does always flannel on the back. My mom would love that. She loves some flannel. She also really likes Minky. I've done, I do have a bolt of Minky that I use for, on occasion, for the back of a quilt. Oh, Katie, uh, just letting you know, I did get confirmation from So Yeah that those quilt and Lori, 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 if you're still here, Auntie L Handmade, um, I did get confirmation from So Yeah that the Alaska quilts that we mailed off were received. So you guys sent me quilt tops to quilt. I brought in my own backing, I think binding for one of them. I think Lori sent me binding for one, maybe not. It's been a long time, but I donated the backing, the batting, and the quilting to it. 
poor Lori sent me hers years ago before I was even moved. But they are done and they were donated. There were a few of you that had done that and all of your quilts were sent in and they were received. Are you starting to run out of steam? No, I want this quilt done. Let's get it going. Oh my gosh. What? What? Okay, I lied. <laughs> and it's really like... The pressing, that's the thing. This is where I feel like picking it up and carrying it over to the board would have been better. Lori's still here. Yay. Hello, Lori. <sighs> Only a few seams left. That's right. And they'll be the fastest ones. Lori said, first border done for me. Keep going, Becca. <laughs> I feel like I'm spending more of my time smoothing out my fabric on this little pressing mat. <laughs> That's where I'm losing time on this thing. This one's not making it go faster. I should take mom's pressing mat. It's bigger than this one. I think I am going to go grab it. There's a ruffle right in here somewhere that's causing it to crinkle up. Let me grab that bigger. Oh my gosh. It's going to stand up. I should have done that an hour ago. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's better. Does your daughter have any interest in quilting? Nope. But she does have interest in apparently me making her a Ren Fair costume. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, ironing board size does matter, right? My niece makes Ren Fair costumes. Great. I might be calling your niece. I'm going to finger press this because I just want to, pr I want to, I feel like I'm losing time by picking up and setting down the iron. And I just want to pick up the iron and finish the pressing. So I'm going to try and do the finger press along this seam to get that to lay open and then I'll come in with the iron. Streamline the process a bit. there. Good golly, Miss Molly. <sighs> I 
And Thea says, my oldest daughter isn't interested either. My younger one just wants to make pillows. Jane Terry says, that sounds interesting. Becca, has she designed it yet? Apparently she has an idea in her head, but she has not given it to me. And I don't make clothes. But my friend Ian has done some costume type work. So maybe that's something that he could walk me through on Skype or FaceTime or something. Because I don't... I don't even know where to begin. Like, I'm like, oh, you want to dress for a Ren fair? Great. Give me a piece of fabric. We'll put it over your head. I'll cut a couple holes in it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll use a zigzag to keep them from fraying. <laughs> then you'll be able to see where you're going. <laughs> but I don't think she wants it to be like that. I think she wants something a little, a little less kindergarten-ish. And... Uh, Listen, if my daughter is showing interest in a passion of mine, right? Like if she's showing interest in my sewing and she wants to work on that project together, I'm not going to turn it down. I will have to step up and learn how to do the thing that she wants me to do. I will meet her halfway on this. I just, I'm dreading making her garments. Listen, last time I made her a garment, I bought a sewing pattern, a dress pattern for an A-line dress and I got the fabric and I made the dress and I put it on her and it was a quarter inch too small so it was a little too tight in the shoulders and she refused to wear it. I said never again but apparently never again means again. All right so Tiffany said to cut it in the middle it will make it easier so we're going to find the middle. We're going to do that by Hello, Irish sail lady. All right. Oh my gosh. We got to find the middle. So. He's laughing at my faces because I am. What the what? <sighs> Tiffany, I'm just going to cut it before I saw all the way to the end. Because, now oh look, Donna said do the same thing. Because I'm not taking my time trying to find the middle. We're just going to go. That's probably what Tiffany meant to do anyway. Oh, you can just cut it once you sew. It's on the table in front of you. <laughs> it was what she meant. I was like, okay, I'll try that. You're all saying the same thing that I was thinking. Just wait till you get closer to the end. Because this, that way made sense. Because I was like, okay, well, if I do it this way, what the, what the what? The first few stitches, it wasn't even sewing. Get back under there and sew. It still didn't sew. How? I know my bobbin didn't run, run out. I have thread in the needle. I double check the, yeah, I have plenty of bobbin. So it didn't sew at the for, for like the first six inches and then it started sewing. And now it's not sewing again. It does this every once in a while and I don't know why. And now it's sewing again, whatever. Pick back up where I left off. I'm 
Okay. Good night, Susie. I am not going to bed because my quilt is not done. I'm not allowed to go to bed until this quilt is done. Sorry. Or at least the center. I'll do borders later. I'm just picturing mom's reaction when she comes up in the morning. She's like, oh, oh my word. Yours is done. It's beautiful. I'd be like, I know, mom. Thank you. It's gorgeous, right? And then she'd be like, dibs. And I'll be like, nope. I have made you more quilts than you have made me. So you don't get this one. try and get this organized just a little bit just a little bit at the groove and by a little bit apparently I mean all the way the things that run through my head when I'm sitting in my sewing room Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, dance, dance. I need to go to like Twitch or TikTok or something where you can live stream and actually have music playing without being like flagged for all sorts of copyrights. <laughs> Martha said, Becca, you can't tell your mama no. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> yes, I can. She doesn't like it. But I can. Oh. How we doing? Yep, still stitching. Thank you, Bubba. You keep it going. Keep it going, Bubba. Go sleep it on this job. They haven't made you work all week. I've been working. It's time for you to clock in. Baba said, okay. It is, Katie. It's going to be really pretty. Really pretty. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Dance, dance, dance. 1990s music running through my head right now. We are a part of a rhythm nation. Technically, I think that was 80s, like 1988 or maybe 89. What year did Rhythm Nation come out with Janet from Janet Jackson? I know, Susan, it's gorgeous, right? Bum, 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 bum. That quilt is gorgeous. How long did it take you to make? Well, lucky for you, every stitch that was put in that quilt was done on the live stream. You can go back and watch it. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it wasn't an hour. <laughs> this is a cheater quilt to me. For me, I feel like. Because 
I feel like I can't take any credit for this, right? I didn't curate the fabrics. I didn't pick out how they were going to lay. The fabrics did that themselves. I didn't curate the selection of the fabrics. This is just like, take someone else's creative idea and just put it all together. There was no creative thought in my brain. Well, I guess maybe the white diamonds were my added element. But I'll, I don't know. And the reason why I bring that up is because like people are like, oh, those fab, that's so pretty. It's so pretty that I, I hear you and I agree with you, but I don't feel like I can say thank you because all I did was buy somebody else's vision. <laughs> <laughs> right like somebody else was like oh no this is the color palette and these are the prints and these this is what the collection is going to look like and I went yes give me some of that take my money <laughs> uh. oh. what time is the whatnot sale tomorrow five o'clock p.m eastern time Pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Tight, tight, tight. So look at you. Look at you. Untwisted. Untwisted. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. What was that? Seam four? We have one more? No. That's eight. That was seam three. We have two more seams to do. It's gonna get real big real soon. Do da, do da. I'm gonna have a finished quilt too. Ha 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 ha. No. Warm up. I'm waiting. Ian will watch my videos and occasionally he'll press pause and my face will be on a weird face and he'll send me a screenshot of it and just laugh about it. And I'm waiting for him to take a screenshot of this. This is how I know he's lurking in the chat because I will end up as soon as the live's over with a screenshot of that being texted to me. But I think he actually had plans tonight so I don't think he's around. Scissors! Oh, hi. Thank you. Stop it. Ian, Becca might have a collab coming up. Ian, wait, is, oh, Ian is here. Oh, hi, hi, Ian. Just in time for you to take those screenshots of me making the funny faces. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so Ian, I'll message you, but Zoe wants me to make her a run fair costume. I think she wants probably another plague doctor. So just so you know, do you have a whatnot link for the YouTube bot? <clears throat> no, but I will make one because it's right here. <laughs> uh oh. What up? What up? Open stream now. Copy. Thank you. Okay. Commands.
Okay, so the exclamation sale will now work for the whatnot link and exclamation 15 is the link to create an account on whatnot and get a uh, $15 I think credit it is. Ooh, a cool quilted plague doctor mask. You bet. I sure did get those screenshots. <laughs> I love you. You're great. <laughs> Thank you for always making fun of me at any possible <laughs> moment. <laughs> You're killer. You're great. I think she wants it for October. So, uh, cause they're going to the weekend that I will be on my cruise, they're going to the Ren Fair. And so I think she wants it for that. So I'm going to talk to her this weekend about what her vision is. And I told everybody here that I'm going to, it's not my strong suit making clothing or anything like that, but I'm going to lean into it because this is something Zoe is showing an interest in and she's asking me to do it. So I will figure it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. She's not it's not going to be, but it does have to be comfortable. So, um, I just need her to help, help me see her vision and we'll go from there. Stay. Mary can help. Oh, that's right. I bet Mary. Oh, yeah. But Mary's going to be gone for the month of September. We're going to be like two ships passing in the night. Um, but she's going to be. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, she might be able to give me some pointers but I don't know if it's like a weekend. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll figure it out. But between having Mary on, like we can always have FaceTime calls. Mary can show me stuff online in YouTube videos. And let's be honest, Etsy for the win. Can I just buy something and take it in or let it out? <laughs> can I do that instead? That might be easier than doing it from scratch. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. What was that? What? The, I think his uh, exact words, what the hell was that? Oh, just Ian throwing himself down the flight of stairs. No big deal. Just go back to bed. Nothing to see here. We still laugh about that. But you didn't fall this time. <laughs> oh yeah, what did I learn last time? Finger press all the way through first and then heat press. <laughs> oh, Martha, it was stairs. It was, it was stairs and chairs on the first trip. So the story that we, we I love telling the story. It's so great. The story is, um, <laughs> he was staying down in mom's apartment, which is in the basement. It's a fully finished walkout basement. It's like in a whole apartment down there. And I was upstairs laying down. And Jason was in his office and Ian went to go. It wasn't terribly late, but it was in the evening. And so Ian went to walk down the stairs to go to mom's apartment. And I'm upstairs in my bedroom with the door shut. So like he's walking to the basement. I'm on the second level of the house and I hear boom, 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 boom. And there was no crying, no dogs barking, no whining, no call 911. Cause I listened 
and there was nothing. So I was like, okay, well, somebody must have just dropped something or somebody fell or whatever. I thought it was Zoe at first, but is like Zoe would have been like, ow, or whatever. But there wasn't even like, ow, there was nothing. And so I was like, okay, no big deal. So I just laid there. And then later I came downstairs and he was like, I fell down the stairs. And I was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, I fell down the stairs. And Jason was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I was like, oh, I heard you. I just didn't know it was you. <laughs> so the story was further made worse because I just laid there. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> Tiffany said now that my hip is fixed I can do stairs so I should be able to navigate to your house <laughs> oh Pat that's a great idea she said now is a good time to show your daughter what you showed your mom to do so maybe I can get her to sew her own costume wouldn't that be great I made a Pocahontas costume for my youngest when she and her friends when she told her friends, I, I had, I had, uh, when she told her friends I had, it made my phone blow up. Yeah, um, no, I will not be making costumes for everybody. Not going to happen. During, um, there was a, there was a mom there was a mom board for my daughter's old elementary school where you could like hire out and do other services. So like if you wanted to buy Mary Kay or Avon or something, you could go on there. But I had offered to do some sewing services. And this one lady had three kids. She had just had a new baby and her daughter had a bunch of um, patches from Girl Scouts that she had earned and she wanted them sewn onto her vest. And she was like, well, I, I, I had offered to do it. And she was like, well, I can pay you. How much, how much would it be? And I was just like, to sew patches onto a vest, like a buck. Like she's like, oh, but it's gotta take so much time. And I was like, they're patches on a vest. It, she thought it was gonna take like a whole weekend. It took me like 10 minutes. <laughs> So when Ian texts you, is it a ringtone of someone falling off a chair? No, but that could be arranged. Maybe a minion going, oh, <laughs> oh poop. <laughs> oh, I am unthreaded. In fact, we are just going to take, we're going to take one for the team and rethread because that spool's almost dead. I could just see it happening in the middle of the seam. in the hole. Where else can you go on YouTube at night and hear somebody talking to Thread? Get in the hole. I feel like this is that scene from um, Happy Gilmore where he's like bend down yelling at the golf ball to get in the hole. Go to your home. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, poop. I had, um, when I first got my iPhone, ringtones for different people were all the rage. And of course you had to have a fun, they came out with the fun alert tones. You had different text tones too. And I, Despicable Me was a big movie in our home. I've got two more by the way to do. Despicable Me was a great big movie that the kids loved. And so we watched it. Jason and I are in the basement and I had set the ringtone, the text tone for my phone to a minion laugh. I was like, <laughs> that's kind of what it sounded like. And we're downstairs talking 
and there was a lull in the conversation and my phone goes, <laughs> I about pooped my pants. I was like, what the heck? It was creepy. I changed the text tone right away. <laughs> Whatever one it was. That was funny. <laughs> What's in the basement with us? <laughs> My phone. <laughs> Donna says Ian needs a shirt that says boom 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 I'm alright <laughs> we'll get him that one and we'll get him another one that says curb 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 or maybe I need that one curb curb we only got one more seam after this and the next one will be very short Hey, um, I just realized Martha's in the chat. Can somebody drop Martha's channel? I, Martha, I know you've been here for a while. I'm sorry. I'm not just realizing that Martha's here now. I've been talking to you all evening. Um, could somebody put Martha's channel link in the chat? Tiffany, Ian, Donna, one of you, please. She's got just over 500 subscribers, and she's really trying to get to 1,000. And you're checking out her channel would help her immensely. And if there are any other content creators out there that want their links dropped, just put a heart emoji in the chat. And I am sure Ian and Tiffany would be more than happy to help promote your channel. Drop your link in the live chat. Okay. We're going to cut this with my scissors first. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. If somebody could put uh, Katie's Greenland Quilter in the chat, that would be great. Hello, M. Smith. We're going to live dangerously. We're not going to press this time. We're just going to sew. We're just going to sew. We're going to live dangerously this time. For those of you that are watching on the replay, the Martha that I am talking about is Martha's Creative Life. You can search her up on YouTube. And Katie is Greenland, Greenland Quilter. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Like, up, look at that. This is the last scene. From chaos to this. Let me just make sure that when I 
furled this open, all of my diamonds is gonna go in the right direction. Yes, I think they are. Indubitably! I don't even know if that's the right use of the word. But this is my last scene, and I'm a little delirious. It's fine. I want to get a shirt or make a shirt that says quilt hair don't care and it has like a mom with like the messy bun on top of her head. Quilt hair don't care. I don't know why I thought of that just now. Probably because my hair is in a ponytail. And I feel like I wear the ponytails all the time now. Because my hair is too long. And I'm going to go get it cut next week. Becca after dark you guys. Hello, cops. It's the Popo -po, Scram. Cops is short for Crossover Paranormal Society. Hello. Welcome to the live chat. I'm on the last scene of my Jelly Roll race. Just in time to see the reveal. Aw, yeah. Here's another screenshot opportunity for you and get your thumbs ready. Wait, I think I got to do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that was it. All right, I'm going to chop that with my rotary cutter and a ruler because I stoned right off the edge. <laughs> Martha said, I can't, Becca, L-O-L. -L. Well, this is what happens after the bewitching hour. <laughs> Here we go. Becca's getting punchy. That's right. I got it all the way through. Did it cut all the way through? It did. It's falling apart. Okay, who's ready for the reveal? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm not even going to stop and look at it. I'm just going to hang it behind me and then I will take it in. I'm just going to click. Oh, I sat for too long. I'm getting old. Oh, man. Let's move out of the way. Yeah. Look at that red right through the middle. And look at these diamonds and how they're scattered. What do you think? What do you think? Looks good. Looks real good. Real good. I approve. It's at least a five out of a ten. Hmm. I'm literally just sitting here absorbing all of the different fabrics. I don't feel sturdy over there. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Looks good. 
Etsy. And I didn't even stress about the placement. I will say a um, couple of things to think about as you're doing this project. You do have a little bit of control over the placement of your fabrics because every time you go to sew your rows together, you get to decide what two colors touch when you do that. So you do have that opportunity. So for example, right here where the reds are in the middle, that's that last seam. That was my last one. I could have sewn the top row and the bottom row together and then I would have had a pink concentration in the middle. But I don't think about that when I'm doing these because the goal is just to sew the quilt top. So what are my next steps for this one? Well, I think I'm gonna do a two and a half inch white border same fabric as the diamonds around the whole thing just to kind of let your eye rest and then in the outer part i'm going to pick a fabric i'll be honest it's probably going to be turquoise or aqua a fabric from the in inner part of the quilt that i really like color wise i'm going to make that a nice big thick border so i'll i may even go try to find like the hummingbird i really like that aqua hummingbird I may go try to find some of that print on Etsy and make that be the border print. I like the aqua one, but I also really like that dark blue one right about there. It has like very light green, almost a yellowish type, a soft yellow tan type uh, color, a hummingbird. But I like that dark color. I don't think I want red. So I've got to find a, I like the, I like, I want it, it's going to have two borders, the, the two and a half inch white border and then a bigger print color border. And then when I bind it, I am going to bind this in a white. I did that with, I took a couple of jelly rolls that were similar in this color. I think they were actually different, but I took a couple of jelly rolls that have, um, a lot of beautiful colors in them and I made a Bargello out of it and it was so busy and the movement just never stopped and I didn't put a border on it it was big enough it didn't need a border but I bound it with white and I loved the way that looked so I think I want to do the same thing here so all right it would dark blue would make a great frame it would both blues maybe I could do the aqua as the inner border and then the dark blue and then bind it in white. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll figure it out. But what I do know is it's almost midnight and I have been live for four hours. And that is a rare thing for me on a Friday night because I'm really, I'm really tight about two hours and I'm out. <laughs> so um, I did two live streams tonight, <laughs> but I also have a finished quilt. And I had a lot of fun with it. So I think I'm going to go to bed because I've got a quilt show to go to in the morning. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was a blast. Don't forget, Ian, to send me those crazy screenshots. I can't wait to see how stupid I look sewing those seams. <laughs> Excellent. 15 minutes short of four hours. That's all right. That's all right. <coughs> thank you, friends, so much for hanging out with me tonight. Next week. What are we doing? Uh, it is the 1st of September. So a couple of notes about next week's live stream. If you have not already filled out the form for my 20,000, yes, 20,000, my 20,000 subscriber giveaway, please make sure to do that. It is over on my website. It's uh, sobecca.com slash giveaway, I think is the link. It's also in the description box of my Tuesday video. So you can go check those out. And I think it's on my website somewhere. So go check that out, fill it out. On Friday night, September 1st, I am going to pull a name live on the air. I'm not going to show their contact information. It's just going to be their YouTube name. And that person will get a gift from me to celebrate the 20,000 subscriber milestone. It is open worldwide. You do not have to be here to win. But how cool would it be if you were here when I said your name? I mean, how cool would that be? Next week, I think we're working on... Village Green Clue number eight. Is that right? No, 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 no. We're, we're working on Carnival Clue number two. I always get a mix up. We're working on Puzzle Mystery Quilt Clue. I don't remember which one. 
but one of them. <laughs> so the next three Sundays, we'll be working on blocks. It'll be puzzle mystery quilt, puzzle mystery quilt, and then actually the next four Sundays, puzzle mystery quilt, puzzle mystery quilt, uh, designer mystery quilt, block number three, designer mystery quilt, block number four. So no big quilts for the next few weeks, just small blocks to work on projects that I've got going on. Thank you for hanging out with me, friends. I will see you guys all in a week or on Tuesday for the Tuesday video. Bye. The Tuesday video is going to be awesome. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm going to show quilts from the quilt show that I'm going to tomorrow. Okay. I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here because I'm leaving. Becca out. It'll be funnier if I actually clicked when I said that. Becca out.